We are going to discuss a few different things that you should probably get at some point in your life, but may have not been taught and should know before going off to college and having to like be your own person and deal with your own stuff. Um, as some of you are figuring out now, like Ian was just trying, it was just starting to try to open the bank account and got a weird phone call. Because um, they do expect some things from you when you go to open the bank account. Uh, okay, so, right, so at some point before you go off and you're no longer with your parents all the time, you should have a bank account in some sense. Um, some people will start opening like a savings account when they're young. I think I had one when I was in like middle school or something. It had like $100 in it. It didn't matter. But in theory, I had an account. Um, it's not very useful, you can't really do anything with it, but at least got the idea that banks exist and they're, they're a place you can go. Um, now you can decide basically if you want to have an actual bank account with some place, like there's a bunch of branches, right? There's a uh, Wells Fargo branch on the street, there's Chase branches, all those big banks. Um, there's also a bunch of online bank accounts. Um, I don't remember the last time I was actually in a bank. Um, <laughs> I bank with a place that's online and I just call them or like mail them whatever I need to do or it's all online and you like deposit checks with your phone and everything's really simple. Um, so I never actually have to go to a physical location anymore. Um, but yeah, to open a bank account you would go to whatever your preferred bank account place is. Um, anyone have a suggestion? Let's um, And you should be able to like... Uh, so you can check on checking accounts, which is normally what you're going to need to be able to actually like use your debit card and things for most of what you need to do at the moment. Um, or not. Oh, because it wants me to deselect my location. Sure. Um, all right. So a couple things. So everyday checking, banking made easy, open with $25, right? So you can deposit $25 and get a bank account. It makes it sound really awesome. Uh, however, to avoid the $10 monthly service fee, you either have to have 10 or more posted debit card purchases, you have to have a qualifying direct deposit totaling $500 or more, so you have to be earning $500 and having it direct deposited into your account. So like when you get, we get a job, instead of them handing you a check every month, which will still hand you like a statement probably, but instead of having to like deposit that check in your bank account, it'll direct deposit straight into your account. You give them your checking number, your check account number and your routing number, uh, which we're going to look at a second on the check, and it'll go straight into your account or you have to have $1,500 minimum daily balance. So if at any point in the month you have less than $1,500, that one doesn't mean. Um, or if you have a linked Wells Fargo campus ATM or campus debit card. So if you're a college student, you can avoid the $10. Um, um, $5 monthly service fee discount when the primary account owner is 17 to 24 years old. So also if you're just under 24 years old, you can only spend $5 a month. All of those things are terrible, and you shouldn't give a bank any amount of money for having a checking account because <laughs> it's silly. They're not doing anything. <laughs> um, so, like common fees for this checking account before you like open one, you need to know what fees you're going to have to pay the bank because they're trying to make money off you, and ideally you don't want to do that because there's no reason to pay them. Um, <laughs> let's see. So yeah, so if you go to a non Wells Fargo ATM in the U.S., it's two fifty per with per withdrawal, um, that's separate from the fee applied at the ATM. So if you don't use a Wells Fargo ATM, but you try to withdraw money, you pay whatever the fee tells you on the screen, plus 250. It's a terrible amount of money, right? Yeah, don't do that. Um, outside the US, you pay $5 for a withdrawal. So if you go to Canada or Mexico or travel overseas, you're paying $5. Um, overdraft is something you should never do. It basically means if you try to spend money you don't have, clearly that doesn't work, right? You learned that in like kindergarten, you can't do that. Um, so if you write a check or if you have a debit card transaction and you don't have the money, they charge you $35, they cover it, and then you have to pay them back whatever money you didn't. So plus, more. plus more money, yeah. If you get like cash back at like your grocery store, so you say $20 cash back, is a 250 fee applied to that? No. Cash back doesn't, yeah. So that's one of the ways you don't have to pay ATM fees if you just always do cash back. So like people will, there's, a, there's comedians and stuff that talk about going into like a Walgreens, buying a pack of gum, and then returning the pack of gum. Because um, you can do cash back on it. You shouldn't do that. That's a lot of work. You should just get a bank that doesn't charge you ATM fees. Um, <laughs> or banks that you can find everywhere. Right. Uh, of the but even then, everywhere is still a problem. So like, if you end up going to 
any uh, like festival or like amusement park or any place like that where they like lock you into a place, the ATM fees will be absurd. Yeah. Like five, six, seven dollars easily to withdraw money. Um, concerts, any place like that. Um, Benefit to smaller banks that don't necessarily have lots of locations. They will often pay those fees. Right. Yeah. So I'm gonna get into that in a second with the difference on like an, all, an online account and why the bill pay f the fee waiver is so much different. Um, so where does it go? So yeah. So if you and if you also want checks from your checking account, which you think would be like a very useful part of having a checking account is getting an actual checkbook. Um, most of them, you even have to pay for your first amount of checks, and then you have to pay for every other one after that, and you have to pay to like get them shipped to you, and they really just add up a ton of random fees throughout the whole time you have an account. Um, most of these you won't use. Like, I don't think I've ever put a stop payment on anything. That's like if you write a check and then you want them to tell them to stop paying it, or if you have a debit card transaction, you want them to stop payment. Um, to my knowledge, I've never had to put one out. Um, but most places will still charge a fee for that. Uh, international debit card transaction fee. So anytime you have a, every time you use your debit card internationally, it's 3% of whatever you're paying. Um, so if you go travel, um, you're paying more money again. Um, so many fees. Yes. So before you make it any account, you want to look through and figure out what the fees are and figure out how much you're going to actually be paying your bank. Um, a some of the online ones um, so the place I use which is a little strange because it's only sort of a bank but it's really an investment place but I don't actually use it really for investment uh, <laughs> but it works you've only heard good things about this place so. I really like this place I've been with them for oh. 10 years now something like that um, a while um, they're largely an investment firm I in theory have an investment account with them that has like a penny in it <laughs> um, because like you had to at the time to like get a bank account and I was like whatever. Um, oh yeah, because they're always on commercial. So. Um, yeah, and it's mostly for investment stuff. But they have a bank. The only branch I believe is in like Reno, Nevada. You can't really go there. But you just call them. They're fantastic on the phone. They help you with whatever you want to know. Sometimes annoyingly nice. Like you basically anytime you go to travel, you need to call and tell your banks ahead of time that you're traveling so that they don't cancel your debit or credit cards because they think like they got they were stolen. So normally it's like a okay, and like for most people it's like an automated line, and you tell them, or like they put you on somebody, you very briefly tell them where you're going, and that's it. Schwab literally had me on the phone for like 30 minutes because they were just talking about my trip and wanted to know where I was going. Like it's it was a problem at some point. Like it was almost too good of customer service. I was like, I need to call other people. Uh, so theirs is completely unlimited ATM fee rebates, no matter what. So I can like use every ATM in the world, no matter what, and they just reimburse whatever fee the ATM tells me they're going to charge me. Um, so I haven't paid an ATM fee years. Um, no service fees or account minimum. So if I have a dollar in the account, it doesn't matter. They'll keep my checking account forever. Um, in theory, I get interest on the account, but it's like 0.15%. So it's not a whole lot, but if you have money, it's better than most checking accounts that have zero interest. So they're actually giving me money, which makes sense because I'm when I'm giving them that my money to use, right? Like with a bank, they are invested, once you give them their money, it's not like your money stays in like a separate account and it's your dollars. They pile it up with everybody else's money and then they invest that money and they're getting money on owning a bunch of other people's money for a while, right? Like, so you giving them your money is useful to the bank. So the fact that they want you to pay a bunch of fees makes no sense. Um, What's the trade off for using a bank with like, like Wells Fargo with all the fees? Um, you have actual branches, right? So you can go there, okay. which is nice. Um, so it's harder for me, like if I wanted to do things like, if I had a bunch of cash I needed to deposit all the time, it'd be very difficult to do. Like I can't, I basically can't deposit cash into my checking account. I very rarely need to, um, but if you work a job where you're getting tips or something like that where you have a bunch of cash coming in, you would need to have some other bank that you have an actual place you can go and hand them money. Um, also if you need to like get change and stuff, it gets weird. You just mail it? You just mail it? I can't mail cash. You should never mail cash in general, but you oh. can't mail cash to Charles Trump now. So like, and what I would actually do is I'd go get like a cashier's check, which would cost me like a dollar, and because like you can go to like anywhere and get a cashier's check made to whatever cash amount you wanted, and then send that in. Um, but I would, that doesn't matter. Like I don't have a lot of cash coming in ever. <laughs> uh, it's not like you guys are giving me tips every day for like service. That would be strange. Um, That'd be really. At the end of the day, everyone just gives down like two, three dollars. Like, he just has a tip jar on his desk. Right? Um, uh, 
Yeah, but they do free bill pay too. So like, if I need to like send bills out to people, if I need to send, if I want them to basically write a check and send it to somebody, they'll do free bill pay to wherever I want. Um, all the check depositing is done on the mobile app. So like, when I do get like physical checks, you just do it with the phone, and it takes three seconds. I don't have to go anywhere. Um, so you take a picture of a check, and you just like, where do you put the check now? Oh. Uh, you write void on it in theory, well, but most of the time it gets ripped up and thrown in the trash can. Okay. But like, <laughs> until the transaction goes correct, through, then right. you just rip it up. Yeah, you want to make sure you actually have the money in your account. Like, thank you, America. Take picture. Correct. Mo yeah, most of even the brick and mortar, almost every bank now, that's in some way reputable and big enough. Like, some small little credit unions won't, which we'll, we can talk about credit unions in a second. Um, but most places now have some app, like, you have the app on your phone, you take a picture of the front, you sign the back, which we'll talk about how checks work. Um, you take a picture of the back, and then you get your money in your account. Um, um, like I said, this one comes with a linked Charles Schwab brokerage account. You don't have to deal with anything with it. Um, somewhere in here, it has the whole entire fee structure. Oh, yeah. So yeah, almost every bank has to have this. You, before you open up a checking account, this document exists with every bank, and you see what all of the fees are. And the reason why this one is nice is that's a giant zero right there. A <laughs> uh, giant yes. Yeah, basically. So like the few things that do have fees are like, if you do overdraft, it's twenty five dollars each, uh, which is still less than the Wells Fargo one. Um, returned items, stuff like that. So things that I've never actually had to do. Um, rush delivery for new debit cards is fifteen dollars, but it, it's, every time I've had to do it, it's been like two days and it was free still. Like it was very fast. Um, also, the really nice thing with them is they give you all the checks you ever want to an amount that is actually absurd. Um, like the first time you box? open the account, they give you a box of, I think it's 500. Um, and then whenever you want more, you just call them and we're like, oh, hey, can I have some more checks? And they're like, yeah, okay. And then they're like, how many would you like? A thousand? I'm like, no, that's too many. That is too many. Can you please give me less? That's stacks of checks. And then they just send them to you and you pay nothing and you just have checks um, for forever. <laughs> Um, in theory, you can buy them if you want like fancy checks that have like designs on them. But who, who, yeah, who's using checks that often? All, all I'm gonna say is you're a better advertisement for them than their actual advertisement. Oh, almost yeah. certainly, because like, but I'm also advertising to not use the services they want you to use, which is their brokerage account and stuff. Uh, <laughs> there are other big accounts that are good too. Um, we were discussing Ally at one point, or just, how do, how do you Ally? Spell it? Ally with a Y, right? Not not like as in the Chinese. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so they were like a, uh, they were mostly for car loans, but now they're a full bank too. Um, and they have a pretty reasonable fee structure. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it was. I was talking to Ian about this the other day. Uh, yeah, so they have any all point ATM is free, plus they reimburse $10 per statement. So basically you can most of the time you can use your ATM once or twice a month anywhere and be fine, um, which I think I don't use an ATM more than once or twice a month. Um, also, you don't send a ton of checks anymore either, so like I think I write basically one check a month, which is my rent. Uh, <laughs> very rarely do I write another check. <laughs> um, everything else is just done online with bill pay, so. Uh, uh, oh yeah, so this is nice because you get 0.6% interest back on your checking account, which is higher, way harder than Schwab, um, which is pretty, that, that's pretty that's good. Huge. That, yeah, that's a lot right now. Um, yes, and most of their fees are almost no, non-existent too, which is nice. Um, yeah, you can get official cashier checks and stuff made by them, all sorts of stuff for free. So they're not a bad option either. I haven't used them, so I can't endorse them wholeheartedly, but I've heard good things. I don't know, they, they apparently have four and a quarter stars from some rating service, I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh no, that, that's reviews. That's oh, it's just actual customer reviews on their customer review site, on their own site, okay. That's sketchy at all. Across like 8,000 reviews though, so, on their own site. <laughs> um, a little weird, but yeah, so making sure you actually know what you're gonna get ahead of time before opening a checking account is important. Um, every checking account you have nowadays will come with a debit card. Um, it's either a Visa card or a MasterCard normally. I don't think I've ever seen a debit card that wasn't Visa or MasterCard. Discover uh, free numbers. Like Discover or American Express, but you can't really oh, do. American Express is just credit. 
Right, that's what I'm saying. Right, I don't think either of them have debit cards. I don't think Discover does either. So I'm pretty sure it's just Visa or MasterCard. But yeah, so you have a debit card, so this one is not a credit card, so it's linked to actual money that I have to have, right? Uh, You're just like waving in front of the camera. Cover up your numbers, Alan. <laughs> If so, oh, yeah, that camera's not that good. Anyone watching the video, feel free. One of those free. red 8K cameras. Just feel zoom in on that. Um, Just do some pop show stuff. Yeah, so like enhance. enhance. It. <laughs> <laughs> and you also don't have the three digits on the back, so it's going to be hard to use. Um, well, now we know it's three digits. Um, but they can get the results. All these are Okay, so... Right, so debit card and credit cards basically look the same, um, right? Like there's no there's no real difference. All of these are super fake looking. Uh, this one's one bad. This one's reasonable. Okay, so right, so every credit card, debit card, whatever has a 16 digit. Nope. Yes, that's how many digits there are. Um, 16 digit card number. Um, it'll either say Visa or Mastercard, and it'll say debit on it. Um, so in this case, it's just like using a check. When you swipe it, the money actually comes straight from your account. Um, it's money you already have. It has your name. It has your expiration date. Um, things you should do is make sure to have like a photo of the front and back of the card somewhere where no one else can see it. Like get like a password protected account or something. Because if you lose it, there's a number on the back that you need to call to tell them you've lost it, so they can replace it. But it's also only on the back of the card. It also comes on like the form you get when you originally get the card. But who keeps it? Exactly. Like you should like have a place where you keep all your files. That's very useful, right? Like I have a fire. I have a little fire box for like my passport, and, like birth certificate and stuff at home. But also like a bigger file thing with like financial records and stuff that you should also have. Um, it doesn't have to be huge. Like one of the things like we have for like the scouting box is fine. Like with like some folders that's to organize it a little bit. What? The oh, tiny that's one. Oh, that scouting. Okay. The tiny one. <laughs> 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 Just a giant scouting tote. Please take that. There's also Mastero card, which is owned by Mastercard. <laughs> um, right. So normally when you use it, you're just swiping it. Nowadays, you have to ask if it's swipe or chip, which is a super annoying time to live right now, by the way. Um, <laughs> or Apple Pay or Samsung Pay. Or well, I mean, if no, but if you have your card in your hand, you still don't necessarily know what to do with it when you go to buy something right now, which is very annoying. Uh, your card game or phone stores have different technologies. Right. Some of them are being. Right, some of them have the chip thing, but they refuse to let you use it or insist it's broken all the time. Yeah, they have the chip thing and they're like taped over. They're like, no, and like, they, yeah, it's taped over, you don't know what to do. So basically you just ask now. To... You basically just ask now. You basically walk up and say, Carter's chip or swipe, and they'll like point. Well, like, if you just swipe the chip, we'll get better. Yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so you're, again, your debit card is money that you actually have. It comes straight out of your bank account. Um, you need to work for that money and use it. Credit cards, on the other hand, is money you don't have, which is a very important part of this. So you can't just spend it because, again, you don't have that money. You do owe it back at some interest rate, right? So when you go to apply for a debit card or a credit card, they're going to give you an interest rate that you're going to have to pay it back at. Um, ideally, if you pay it almost all the time, you have a grace period, which is your month, right? So. If I if I have a debit card or if I have a credit card that has zero dollars on it right now and I go and start spending money on it, if I spend like a hundred dollars, if I pay it back before the next billing cycle, so like the next my, my next bill, um, they don't charge any interest, right? You have, you have a grace period where you don't charge any interest and just kind of like a free loan that you have briefly. Um, what's nice about that is if you start, we're not going to go into a ton of this because we don't have the time. But there's a whole there's a lot of Reddit forums, there's a lot of places on the internet where you can use credit cards and credit card. Uh, cashback services and all those things you see ads for, like freaking flyer miles and all that, to get stuff based on just the money you're spending, right? So like, if I spend $100 on one of my credit cards, I get, I think one of them is 2% always, and one of them is like one and a half, and sometimes five, it's more, like, it's weird, I don't know. There's a bunch of different stuff, like different, like every three months they change where I spend stuff, I get more cash back. It doesn't really matter. But in general, you get some amount of money back, you get like a discount on your purchase for using the credit card, because the credit card makes money when you buy stuff, right? So like they have to, um, the person who's then taking the fee, right? Who, if you're at McDonald's or whatever and you swipe your credit card, McDonald's is paying Visa some amount of money to allow you to do that. Um, so since Visa's getting money, they want to incentivize you to keep using their cards, they give you money back. Um, or frequent flyer miles or points that you can use and shop in weird like point stores on credit card websites and all sorts of weird stuff. Um, but again, the most important part, you don't have that money yet. <laughs> 
So if you have a credit card and you put $3,000 on it and you don't have $3,000 to then pay back the credit card, you still owe them that money and you're going to start incurring a lot of interest. Alan, uh, do you get, does your credit score get raised if you pay back in the grace period or? Uh, a little bit. Um, it's not as well as if you can hold a balance for a little while. So it's not necessarily bad to have some amount of credit balance for a little while. Um, um, is that yeah. So what exactly is like PayPal in the scheme of this? Um, that's a good question. So like all the like the cash apps and PayPal and things are basically just ways to transfer money, right? Like there's like a payment service. Um, PayPal has some form of like a credit credit card or something. Yes. Like you can get like a, also we can talk about store credit cards in a second because those are scary because people try to like they think they're getting a way better deal than they actually are. Um, so yeah, so you can get PayPal credit, which I've never signed up for and I have no idea how it actually works. But largely, it's just a system that allows you to pay for things without giving away your actual bank account number, right? So like they insure your payments. They were the original point of PayPal was to insure eBay payments. Mm -hmm. um, mostly, right? Now it, now you can use PayPal like everywhere, but pretty much you could use it at eBay when it first started. Um, and it was kind of sketchy because you were sending random amounts of money to random people across the country for them to send you stuff, right? Like that's how, what eBay originally was. Uh, so with that, it was kind of worrisome to just be like, you know, how do I get my $20 to this dude for my 80, or 8,000 pogs, right? Like it was really hard to do. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> um, so and you didn't and you were worried that the guy might not send you your eight thousand pogs and then you would be out your like twenty dollars or whatever it is. Uh, so now with PayPal, you make PayPal send him the money, and then there's a little bit of time where you can be like, "Yo, PayPal, I didn't get my eight thousand pogs," and they're like, "Okay, we're not gonna, we're going to take that money back from that guy, and you get your money back." Uh, so it's insurance. It's basically insurance, and they get a fee, they take a fee off from. But, you know, the seller gets slightly less money because of that um, insurance, right? Like, the, the, the people who are selling the products are paying for the service, basically. Uh, but it is very useful because you can basically have your debit card information, your credit card information on PayPal. Then if someone takes PayPal, instead of having to, like, type it in all the time, you just log into your PayPal account, select which card you want. It normally has your shipping address and stuff already filled out, and you can do it faster. Uh, you can also send money directly to people. Like we end up, this is how we normally pay for a lot of the stuff that we like actually get from China and like negotiate through and they're going through PayPal um, because it's easier. So like international stuff is easier through PayPal because um, they can avoid <coughs> some of the other stuff. Um, we'll get okay. to that in a second. Okay, so. Right, uh, building credit and stuff will come in a second because we haven't quite talked about actual how to write a check, which we should have done before we talked about credit cards, but yeah, we'll roll back. What? It says Jane Doe and John Doe and John. Uh, Yeah, so I'm guessing this is an example of a joint checking account, but I'm not entirely sure. So, <laughs> which can't happen, right? So like, normally you would have the other name at the top two. So it's a little odd that someone else is signing for it that doesn't have their name on the account at all. Uh, but like once you get married, you can have a joint checking account and it'll only have both names. Um, it doesn't always have both names, but normally it does. Um, you can also have, even on, a, even on split accounts, you can have second signatures and stuff. So like right now, you could go get an account where you guys aren't adults yet, but you would basically have an account where you and your parents were both signatories on the account and you could both sign checks and things. Um, right, so most of the time when you're writing a check, they all look basically like this. Um, you have your, your name and address up here. Um, you put the date that you're actually filling out the check. You put who you're paying it actually to, so whatever the company is. You write the amount in numbers. Um, and then you actually write the award, uh, add the words, not awards, that'd be weird. You write the words and you actually have to write out how much it is. Um, so like if it's 640, you would write SIX base 100 and like actually write it all out. Um, you don't have to, if, you're, if there is some amount of sense, this is the easiest way is just to do it on numbers again because writing 15 cents is annoying. Um, so it's perfectly reasonable to do and 15 over 100. Um, the line through the rest of it is important so that somebody can't come in and like cross this out and cross this out and then write a new amount there. <laughs> that would be bad. Um, so putting the line for the rest of it kind of just shows you're not using the rest of whatever the line is. Um, it normally doesn't happen, but it could. Um, the memo line is largely for 
yourself normally to like tell you what it was for because then you you put it in like your um, checkbook register where you write what like what checks you filled out. This is somewhat of a lost art now because there's not a whole lot of reason to keep a checkbook register anymore because everything's online and you can do it really fast. Um, but part of the checkbook at the back of it is a little list where you're supposed to write down wherever, what checks you've actually written so you can remember how much money you have and figure it all out. Um, because before the internet, you had to like know how much money was in your checking account and like keep track of that. Now you just type a couple things into your phone and it tells you how much money is in your checking account. Uh, uh, okay, so yeah, so basically at the back of your checkbook you get maybe that's not useful. Uh, <laughs> not useful at all. Um, that's, that's like shopping. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> that's not useful. Okay, kind of useful. There we go. So you basically you would put the check number, the date, the description of the transaction, um, what's coming out, and then your balance, right? So you'd have your debits or what's getting taken out of your account, credits or what's going into your account, um, and the balance. So then you would keep track of your balance all the time. So then you wouldn't do things like overdraft because you wouldn't spend money you didn't have. But again, now I don't. Have, I have not filled out my checkbook register basically ever. Um, I'm pretty sure my mom taught me how to do it and would be mad that I don't do it because my mom still writes checks all the time. But, <laughs> like at the grocery store, it's I don't know what age. she's doing. Um, it's very confusing. Wait, um, what? <laughs> what you, checks at the Yeah. Like she'll, just, like, she'll just like sit at the counter and like still fill out checks. It's very confusing. I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> um, but she, she, she likes it, so whatever. Um, and she still fills out her register very detailed. Um, I've tried to convince her to go into like mint and what I'm going to talk about in a second. Things that you can just do it for you, basically. Oh, that's um, pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, but yeah, so that's basically you fill out your check, then you sign it here. Um, then you hand it to somebody, and now they have your money, basically, right? They're going to deposit it into their bank, um, and they'll, it happens so fast now, it's within a day, basically, on those places. Um, if you get a check to be able to deposit it, you have to flip it over and sign it on the endorsement line. Uh, check. So the back of the check kind of looks like this. And before you deposit it, you have to sign your name right here, where it says endorse. Um, you can also endorse it over to somebody else. So like, one of the, uh, every once in a while, we'll get a check that's for the school that instead of getting sent to the school, gets my name on it, which is very confusing. Like, I don't want TRI registration fees. They're not mine. But every once in a while, it'll be to Alan Gregory instead of to St. Agnes Academy. Um, so then I have to endorse it over to the school. Um, and then they're able to deposit it, deposit it instead of me. Um, so if you're giving a St. Agnes, St. Agnes, if it's going to you, you just say you, like, you sign your name? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so like for the endorsement thing. So basically on the front of the check, uh, check so instead of being St. Agnes Academy here, somebody will like pay their registration fee or pay something, and it'll say Alan Gregory, which is wrong. So, and so what I have to do is I have to go on the back of the check and put sign my name, and then in, then I have to put endorse to St. Agnes Academy, and then they're able to deposit it. You shouldn't have to do that very often in your life, but on occasion you will. Um, okay, so before we get too far into credit, um, we're going to talk about Mint real fast. So Mint is a website. I'm not going to log into mine so you guys can't see all my purchase history. Um, <laughs> But basically, mint.com, it was like the first one. There's a couple others that do a similar thing now. Um, they're the one I've used forever. I think they're bought by Quicken now. Um, into it. Into it, yeah, the same people, right? Yeah. Um, but basically what they do is they allow you to see all of your checking accounts, your, debit, your credit cards, um, your car loans, your education loans, basically any account you have where you owe or have money somewhere you can put into, including like even assets. So like if you own a house, you can put your house in here. If you own a car, you can put your car in there. Um, and it'll basically tell you your net worth and it'll, you can monitor all your transactions very easily. Um, it sends you a weekly, like it can send you a weekly email telling you what money you spent that week. Um, and basically you can keep, it'll keep track of all the money you spend and how much money you have and how you're doing financially without you having to do like any work, which is super convenient. Um, Cause one of the biggest things that you have to do once you actually start having money on your own 
is to remember that you have money on your own and keep some amount of track of it without doing bad things and running out of money, right? Because uh-huh. running out of money is bad, right? That's where you don't want to be. Um, so this sets you very easily. You can set up budgets in it. Um, I think I have one of these pictures somewhere, has it? Um, uh, yeah, so this kind of shows the budget. Um, this is not a very high quality graphic, but so wow. somehow this person had a $1,200 shopping budget for the month of October. I highly recommend you don't do that. That seems like an absurd amount of money. Not um, for groceries. <laughs> That's in what Just in general. I don't know whose budget this is, but this is a terrible plan. $1,200 <laughs> 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 for, for shopping, $230 for entertainment, $200 for groceries, $160 for... They're paying... Three seventy on food a month for I don't know how many people, but that how does much not. Are they shop- I don't know. They're only spending fifty dollars on gas though, which is like most people's one or two Phillips maybe. So they're not driving a whole lot. Um, they obviously live in New York. They're, they're spending they're about two thousand dollars, and they also, by the way, have not paid any of their bills, rent, or anything. This person <laughs> is not financially sound at all. <laughs> Do not follow their plan. Don't be this guy. But in reality, you should have things like rent. Seven hundred, eight hundred dollars, whatever you're paying for rent or mortgage or whatever, however you're living at some point. Friends, your um, own <laughs> Right, you're you only have like gas and fuel. You should probably have some amount that you're putting in savings, whatever your groceries are. But you can make a little budget for yourself. It'll tell you where you are on the line. You're not going to hit it exactly every month, but you can realize, oh, I've spent way too much money on restaurants this month. I need to not eat out. The last third of their total months, right? Is shopping. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't think that's what that is. Uh, They're just all shopping, nothing else. Is that your mom's budget? Yeah, their their bills are coming up apparently from Merrill Lynch. Um, yeah, it tells you when your bills are coming up, which is nice if you forget. Um, ideally, you shouldn't forget to pay bills anymore because basically everything is auto pay. Um, like you don't have to actually remember to pay things anymore. You just set up auto pay and it just does it. Um, the only somewhat problem with that is you do need to be watching it every month and seeing are is it actually auto paying the right amount and is the auto pay actually happening. Um, so like my internet bill, it's not like I remember to log into Comcast every month and pay it. It just takes it out automatically and it just knows to do it. Um, pretty much every bill I have now is set up that way. So it's much easier. You don't have to forget. Because forgetting to pay any bills is very bad, especially like credit card bills. Because as soon as you start missing bill payments, your credit score goes down. When you want loans in the future, you want credit cards in the future, um, your interest rates will be higher, which you don't want. Um, um, yeah, Mint is very useful. You basically, when you like I said, you make the account and then you basically add your account. So you have to have you have to have online accounts for everything you want to add to it. So like your bank account has an online account, you type in its password and stuff. There's a whole there's a system in place to where it's okay to do that where you're not just like they're not gonna be able to steal all your money. Um, there's a banking system now that allows people to log into different accounts and things and make it relatively secure. Um, yeah, you basically just select whatever account you have. They have pretty much everything in the world listed on Mint now. Um, and it works out pretty nicely. Let's see. Um, for credit score stuff, like we kind of talked, we can talk about that briefly. I'll actually even show you guys this one because I don't. It's reasonable. My credit score is not great. It's okay. Like there are people who have better, but that's mostly because I don't have like a mortgage and I haven't had credit for a long time. Uh, what is a good like? So yeah, well, you'll see the yeah, graph in just a second. It's the big range. Mm-hmm. Good, right? The bigger the number, the better. Ah, that's I the only. That's the only thing works. I hope I get up. Their example goes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So I think mine's like 740 like something, 750 <laughs> something. I don't remember. There, you go, 746. That's reasonable. It's not great. It could be better, um, but it's that's fine. Above the example. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Like it's, it's it, for yeah, it's totally. It's not bad, but it's not great either. Um, <laughs> so what's the credit score based on? Uh, we're about to find out. So okay, so one three hundred is the lowest. Eight fifty is the highest. Um, all right, so your credit factors are credit card use. So I have a little bit high on my credit card right now because I think I just I haven't paid off some parts of it. Oh, I, I, this, my car maintenance I just did is on there. Um, 
So I'm using 21% of my credit card use right now, which is a little bit up. If you, if you want to keep it below 20 normally. Um, payment history is a very important part of it. If you miss any payments, it's very, very bad. Don't miss payments. So I have not missed a payment in my life, which is good. Um, derogatory marks are really bad, which are if, like, if you miss a payment for so long, you have like a tax collector or like a bill collector coming after you basically. If you've gone into bankruptcy, um, if you have civil judgments against you where like somebody has a civil suit against you and you're paying back, those types of things, those are very bad on your credit score. Uh, credit age, so this is the average age of all the open accounts is only six years, six months, which seems like a long time, but is really not a lot when you figure people have, you know, 20 year house mortgages and things. Um, so is that why you should get a like, bank account as soon as you're like 18? So yeah, like having a credit card early and having a bank account early and using them responsibly is useful, right? Because credit age does matter. Um, total number of accounts, like mine is, it's a low impact thing, but I have a very small number of total accounts. Like I've only ever had nine total like credit things in my life that includes like student loans and everything else. Um, a lot more people will have like car payments and a bunch of other stuff, but I don't have any of that. Um, <laughs> hard inquiries um, are times you've applied for credit where you're, you're applying for a loan. So a lot of them won't, like most credit card and stuff won't be hard inquiries. Sometimes they will, a lot of times they won't. Um, they can stay in your report for like two years. Um, but basically credit card companies don't want to give credit cards to people who are applying for credit all the time, right? So that, that's a, it's a, there's a reason that's tracked. Um, so having zero is very good, one or two is okay. Having nine would clearly be awful if you're applying for loans. If you're applying for nine loans within two years, something's not going right with your finances. Um, uh, what is credit score? What is credit score? Yeah. Cool. So this is the, this is basically it's a ideally they're gonna look at your entire credit report. Like if they're if somebody's if you go and get or try to get a loan, try to get a mortgage on your house, anything like that, they're gonna look or try to get a new car. Um, they're gonna look at your credit score, but also your entire credit report, and decide what interest rate they're able to give you. So the higher your credit score, the lower your interest rate will be because you're a more, you're, there's more, there's a better chance you're going to actually pay back your loan, right? It's pretty much the number that says how likely are you to actually pay back money if we loan you money, because um, they don't want to start losing a bunch of money if they're loaning, if they're giving car loans to a bunch of people who aren't able to pay them back. Bad things happen, um, like an entire financial crisis happened when we did that with houses a few years ago. Uh, <laughs> so how beneficial is it to get a credit card, never use it, and only use your debit card? Um, never use it, not a ton, um, so you can look at credit cards. Maybe not never use it, but use it occasionally. Yeah, using it occasionally is fine. Um, that's, oh, that was three days ago. I paid back a lot of that, actually, I did that a couple days ago. Because I just put car maintenance on there and then I paid it back. Um, so this just happened to take it at a bad time. So it might actually be a little bit higher. Um, um, but yeah, I, I'm not the most, I'm not the biggest expert on it, but having a credit card that's reasonable, Using it occasionally, having a relatively small amount on it, right? Less than 20% total usage. Um, oh, usage, by the way, so when you get a credit card, you'll have a credit limit, which is how much you're allowed to put on your credit card, right? So each one is different. Um, I think I have one that's 4,000 and one that's two. Um, and then I have one that I literally don't even like, I don't even know what I have the card for, I should probably deal with that. But <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, like, it expired, but I don't think I got the shipment for the other one. Like, I know it's zero dollars. I keep track of it, but I don't think I could actually use it if I wanted to. Uh, but I should probably fix that. But you have. Um, but it exists. Is there, are there any credit card companies or, that you recommend? Um, I haven't done the research right now, but like I said, it, that, it, that's one where you definitely want to look into a lot of research on. There is a, the, the Reddit forums and stuff for it are massive on, like, how to get points and stuff and, like, what the best intro cards are and, like, there's different college cards and stuff. But what are you, no matter what, you have to read all the documentation about what your interest rates will be, what your fees will be, all of that type of stuff, because you don't want to be spending a lot of money just to have a credit card. Like, that doesn't help anybody. Right. So. What are the quality Reddit forms we should be using? Because um, uh, there's a lot of... There's uh, a lot of... Personal finance. Yeah, r slash personal finance. Or okay. yeah. r slash credit cards. Something okay. like that. r slash debt for me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds bad. I found Nerd Wallet to be really helpful, too. Nerd Wallet? Nerd Wallet. Yeah, there's, there's a website that gives reviews on all kinds of personal that finance stuff. Good. Checking yeah. accounts, saving accounts, credit cards. Yeah, one of the, yeah it's, it's, very, it's much easier now that you have like the internet and you can just find the stuff. It's way faster. But you actually have to do the research and not just like 
pick the first ad that you see on TV. Yeah, that's refreshing. Not the most useful. I mean, if you choose Trump. Um, there, you need to program the wheel of Yeah, apparently, oh, apparently the one that's really bad is r slash churning, which is how they actually like get all the points and stuff. Um, yeah. I have not spent a lot of time there, but my the Facebook post where I asked for advice on this thing. Yeah, that's cool. that was a that was a. Oh, you get extra points at this one store. Okay, one anytime I want to buy something, I'll go to that store, buy a gift card, and then use a gift card somewhere else. Right. See, that and also takes a lot of energy crazy. and time, and yeah. does not seem like it's worth it. But a lot of people think it is. So that's fine. If that's what you want to do as a hobby, feel free. I mean, like, you, can, you can also do the extreme couponing thing and like get like millions rolls of toilet papers for thirty cents. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel the need, but some people do. I have no problem with that. If it's your bus. Um, okay. Um, questions about debit, credit, checking accounts at all? Um, yeah. Store specific credit cards. Why don't you? Oh yeah. Most of the time, they they have really high interest rates, so they're fine if you're going to actually remember to pay them back immediately all the time, um, or if you're using them for like a very specific case. Like there are times where like getting store loans is fine. So like you can get. Um, like furniture is a big one, or like mattresses. Like you can get zero percent interest loans, or like whatever. You know the whole no payments for whatever. A lot of those things are very scary, um, especially like the you're like, oh, why wouldn't I buy that? I don't have to pay. I have no payments for six months. But then as soon as you do have payments, you know, it may be accumulating interest during that whole six months where you have no payments. That's a terrible idea, right? Mm -hmm. um, because then you're paying more money for something if you would have just paid it off at the beginning. Um, largely those things don't end up working, right? Like, no matter what, you have to figure out why someone's trying to offer you that thing. They're trying to make money somehow, right? Like, nobody is just giving you stuff for, for the heck of it. You're um, just really nice. That, that's not happening. Um, <laughs> the world works. <laughs> right, like, their, their furniture store would close very quickly if they were just giving away all the money. Uh, so, like, there are some of them are fine. Like, if, if for some reason you shop at Target all the time and you need, and like the red card gets you 5% off or whatever, then great. But make sure you're paying it back. Make sure you're, there's no fees, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know why you're shopping at Target all the time, but whatever. What's wrong with Target? It's fine. I just, if, you, if you shop there enough to where you really need the credit card, I don't know. Like, <laughs> but then how much stuff you're buying at Target. So, if you have a store specific card, can you use that card anywhere or just at the store? Um, it depends on the store and the card. Um, I don't know entirely. I've never had one because every time I've read it, I'm like, no, that sounds terrible. I don't want it. But there's reason to have it. Like, I know my, like, members of my family have used them and used them in reasonable ways that made sense. Um, I've never needed to buy something big enough at Target to get a Target credit card <laughs> where that 5% mattered. But, um, and, like, sometimes you can do it to where you get, like, I think, like, the Amazon one, you get, like, some amount of money off your first time, right? So, like, if if you end up getting fifty dollars for opening the credit card and then have to pay a little bit of interest, and where you still come out on top, that's fine. But again, you still have to be careful to where you're not spending way more and end up losing money. Um, okay, so okay, we hit about an hour on that. We're gonna go through the super basics of taxes real fast, just so if you have, for some reason you end up having to file quickly, um, largely you're gonna end up being dependent on your family's taxes until you're probably somewhere for a few years while you're in college most of the time. Um, but at some point you may file not being independent, um, and especially once you graduate, you'll probably stop being independent. Either way, you have to fill this out, which as soon as you start getting a job, you have to fill out your W-4. Um, this basically tells the government how much they should be ta estimate how much money they should be taking out of each of your paycheck for your taxes. Um, it's not like on tax day you normally, most people aren't actually paying the government money on tax day. They're actually getting money back because they paid too much throughout the year on every single paycheck they get. Um, so in this little W-4, most, most tax forms are built to where they're self-explanatory. You can read all of this stuff and figure out exactly what you're supposed to put in here and how to turn it in and everything. Um, but for most things you're going to be doing, you basically put a one here for yourself and then you put a one here because you're Either you're single and have only one job, so you put a one. Um, if your wages from a second job or spouse are less than 1500 you also put a one. Um, right, you go through and read all of this and you figure out how many ones you put over here. Um, if you have kids, et cetera, there's different numbers you put in. Then you total up everything 
um, and you put a number here. Also, if you want an additional amount withheld from each paycheck, you can tell them how much money you want withheld um, in addition to what a percentage they're going to calculate based on that whatever digit they're going to figure out. Um, and then you turn this into your employer, and that basically gets them the estimate of how much they're going to take out of your paycheck every month. Um, so the problem is if you take too much out, like if you put this make this number really big, they'll start taking up too much money in your taxes, you won't have as much to live on every paycheck, but you'll get a bigger refund when you file your taxes in March or April, whenever you figure it out. So are these for like full-time jobs? Um, every job. Oh, okay. So even if you're having like a part-time job in college, you'll have to fill this out? Yeah. Okay. Um, Why would you want to withhold money from the paycheck? So it's not necessarily that you want to, it's that you have to. Because you, you will have to pay income tax, right? Like, federal income tax is a thing. You have to pay it to the government. Um, everyone who has a job pays federal income tax. Um, you also end up paying um, Social Security and one of the other health insurance ones, but I'm gonna say wrong if I say it on camera, so I'm not gonna do it. Um, um, because I've been listening to way too many podcasts and I'm gonna get it wrong, so I'm not gonna do it. Um, okay, so, right, so you pay those taxes. So. The government requires that you take out some amount. If you take out none and then just like pay the government back, if you do it too much, you'll eventually get fined. Um, if you if you don't make very much at all, you'll eventually like, you may just not have to pay any government to the government. Like at some point, if you make a very little amount of money, you pay no income tax. Um, but that's a pretty small amount. I think it's under like six or seven thousand dollars a year if you're single to not pay anything. Um, um, so you need to have some amount taken out that covers basically what your income tax is. Um, you don't want too much though, because then you're just giving the government a free loan basically, right? Because if, you, if, if you're getting a refund of two, three grand a year every time, you're loaning them that money throughout the year with your ability to not get interest on it or do anything, which is not good. Um, I mean, unless you want to give the government a free loan, that's fine, feel free. Um, I like the government, I don't really, I, I have no problem with taxes. Taxes are pretty good, I like roads. Um, they're nice policemen, firefighters, etc. Um, More roads. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. Um, um, also, you know, larger social net and everybody doing well. I'm all fan for all that. Um, okay, so that you fill out when you get your job, so then they can start basically um, withdraw, withholding some of your money to pay your taxes when you actually fill out your taxes. Um, when it comes time to actually fill out your taxes, you'll get one of these in January from whatever job you have, which is your W-2. Um, it's a pretty simple form. It basically says, hey, you worked here. This is how much money you got from here. So this guy, um, Dana T, or woman, I don't know what Dana's kind of, I don't know what that is. But um, I'm not gonna assign a gender to Dana. Um, this person has made $25,312, they withheld 2522 so that's what the government already has. Um, all of those wages counted towards Social Security, so like you can have certain things that don't count as Social Security, I don't know what, don't ask me. Um, all of my wages always have. Uh, so they'll withhold some amount of Social Security tax, and they'll still withhold some amount of Medicare tax as well. Um, and so you get this little form that tells you where it is. Um, then when you actually go to file your taxes, this is the form you'll use. Uh, most of the time, you just do this online. So you use TurboTax or any of the tax cut or whatever tax service you want to use online. Um, most of them, they're free for the really simple, you have a single job, not a lot of complications in your taxes forms. Um, they're all free. If you start getting more complicated stuff, like if you own your own business, anything like that, you need to have somebody who either does your taxes or you buy more advanced software that does, it, that does more stuff for you. Uh, but basically, you fill out name, um, where you work, your address, all that stuff, and you basically put in stuff from your W-2 into here. You fill out all this stuff, um, more information about um, any wages that weren't on your W-2, so like if, you, like if you work tips and stuff, you're supposed to put them all on here. Anything that you get, any income you have should be on here eventually. Uh, you then fill it out, send it in. Um, if you do it online, they normally give you an estimate of what your your actual, how much you owe in taxes or how much you'll be getting refunded based on how much you've already paid. Um, and then either you get a check or you type in your credit card information or debit card information and 
send the government more money if you owe them more money. Uh, it's really not that hard. Like it takes an hour, hour and a half. Like it is not even it, even that kind could be long. Uh, the biggest thing is don't lose your W two form when you get it in the mail. Um, that would be bad and annoying. Um, most of the time, depending on if you, if you work for a big enough place, places like TurboTax and stuff can just look it up. So you just like type in uh, your name and social security number and your employer or like the employer ID, um, and they'll just pull they'll pull all the information for you off the W two without even having to yeah, actually type in the form. Should you remember your social security number by heart? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That's your homework. Let's go home. It's not that long. I, I know. I know the last four because oh Tracy used to log in, yeah. and then for the, uh -huh. there's the three and the two, and I remember which FRC teams they're close to, but not how much to add or subtract. <laughs> Get, please remember your social security teams. number at some point. You like you'll when, when you get older, you'll fill it out on way more forms, so then you'll remember it. Um, but you should know. I also just know where the card is in my house. Well, yeah, you shouldn't have having to go actually get the physical card is not a good option. Like that should be in some sort of fireproof box because oh. getting that replaced is also not easy. So uh, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Get it makes oh, that, yeah. that birth certificate, etc. Have those in a place. Don't take those out very often, right? I don't, I don't want to keep my passport there if I'm not traveling. Uh, yeah, the, like the little fireboxes are cheap. They're like twenty five bucks. You can like get it. That is incorrect. Oh, it was like Yeah, so yeah, I figured too. Like something like this. Um, it's totally fine. Then if you if there is a fire, you can grab it quickly and have your stuff if you need it. Right? You can no, but the whole point is that it survives a fire. I mean, it would if you're not there, but you also don't want to risk it. It says fire resistant. Oh, yeah, right. They just leave a battery. It's so expensive. That's not how that works. It's twenty six dollars to where you don't have to do a lot of paperwork and pay money to get a new passport and social security card and birth certificate, which are really hard to get. Just so catch your house on fire. Right. I know, like, don't be an idiot. But also, it doesn't have to be a fire, it can be a flood, it can be anything that's happening. You could, just, you could just have to run away for some reason. I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're doing, right? Like, you may be running from the law, I don't know what you're doing, but you need to have your stuff quickly to get, like, you want some, you know, family pictures, things that you don't want to have to replace. Put it in a nice box. Especially, like, in college and stuff, you don't know what you're going to have to do. But Alan, if you're running from the law, don't you not want to have it? Then you're less identifiable. But then if you leave it there, someone can use it. Yeah, you should still have it, but you don't want to like have it to where people can get out. No, it's burn it. It's just burn it. You don't have it running from the law. You don't quite get that. And you don't have it like, uh, you know, have a second firebox. He's a silly house. He's working on his own. You, oh, you have a fake identity. Uh, probably? Like, you know, you have a birth certificate. I mean, it's not required. Like, if, 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 if he wants so to keep it somewhere else, it's fine. Right. Like, at right. some point, I needed to have mine, so I have mine with so me now. But, like, it, was, it was at my parents' house for a while. Uh, you, always back back what? you sent me a Snapchat, okay. I was just I don't think In general, on finances, the number one rule is to spend less than you earn. Should, like that seems trivial, but that's the number one reason people end up in very bad financial situations. Don't, don't blow it uh, on, like, on a whim. Right. right. Like you, you probably don't need a new car. Like you probably don't need all these things. Like if you if you have the opportunity to do it, like if you have your parents helping you, if somebody else, whatever works, that's fine. But if you don't have the money for it, right? If you're if or especially if you like just got a new job or something, and you don't have the money, now you're just putting a loan. It's probably not the best idea, right? Um, like you're gonna end up paying more to get something quickly because you end up having to pay the interest on it and things like that um, that aren't worth it. Um, things that I'm not gonna go into because most of you guys should never be in that situation. But there's never a reason to use payday loan places like that are around like That's all down Gessner. Just, just <laughs> zero reason, just just, right? Just zero reason ever to walk into any of those places. Why they have don't do it. Like on TV. Um, it's a because. People don't understand uh, that it doesn't work, right? Yeah, like, they miss the fact that there's, like, no, we whatever. Five million. Million. Yeah, like, literally 200, 300, oh, 400 no, percent interest. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> interest amounts that don't even make sense, right? Like, you borrow a $1,000, you're supposed to pay it back within a month. If you pay it back in four months, it's $4,000 you owe. Like, things like that are not allowed, right? Like, you clearly shouldn't do that. That's a, that's a low example. Like, it could be way worse. Would you suggest using jail wise? 
uh, if you're in jail and need it, <laughs> like, ideally you don't find yourself needing bail. <laughs> but bail bonds are slightly different and more reasonable because, yeah, you should get out of jail. Okay. <laughs> don't end up in jail. But first off, don't end up in jail. But what about the monopoly fund? <laughs> <laughs> no. Go to jail for gold, though. Yeah. 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 Very briefly, we mentioned this earlier about hourly versus salary and stuff. Um, but most of the jobs you'll get while in college, especially if you're working at like, you know, on campus somewhere, you're going to be working hourly. You have to fill out a timesheet and you get paid whatever, eight to twelve, fifteen dollars an hour, or whatever you're getting paid in college. Um, so then you're filling out your time card every time, and you're getting paid by how many hours you work. Uh, Where are they going with this? Right. The other, once you're out of college and you have a full-time job, you'll be getting paid salary, which means no matter how many hours you work, you're still getting paid basically the same amount. Um, some salary jobs will pay overtime, most don't. Um, but what it normally means is you're expected to be working most of the time 40 hours a week. You should be working that amount of time. You'll get some amount of vacation, but your paycheck's the same every two weeks or whenever you get paid, most of the time every two weeks. Um, uh, do internships usually play hourly or salary? Depends. Um, uh, <laughs> nothing or, um, or nothing, right? It very much depends on the internship, where it's at, okay. what it is. Um, mine were hourly, but I was expected to work 40 hours a week. Oh, so. Um, because they, most of the time they're not going to be salary unless they're long-term things, right? Like, yeah. they knew I was only working for three months, so they were like, okay, oh. you'll get paid. I think one of them was like, one was nice, one was like 22 or something an hour, that was nice. Was, but, this, was that the, the I think that was the one for the army. The yeah, I think it was the paper shredder. shredder. <laughs> um, That's cool. no, that one was nice. Um, um, okay, so what do we want to talk about next? Cable. Um, cable companies. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk. Um, so we'll cut the cable. Yeah, yeah there you go. Um, yeah, so... Ideally, you end up, you should be getting a checking account at some point. Like, you can have one in high school, you can also get one once you're into college. But before, once you're on your own in some way, you should have some way to have money more than the cash in your pocket, right? Like, that, that's not necessarily the best solution. Um, when you're soft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, not just the cash in your shoe, but you mean or the your mattress. Your shoe? Right, yeah, that's not the best place to do it. You probably have some form of financial institution backing you. <laughs> Um, okay, so very briefly in apartments, because that'll be one of the next things you'll have to do. Like at some point, whether you're in college or something, you'll probably have to get an apartment with like friends or something for some you know, one or two years. You're probably not going to live on campus all four years. Um, you might, but probably not. Um, where shall we go to the apartments? Uh, Houston. Houston. I'm not like the websites. Um, this one actually exists and is fine. Um, there's a lot, I don't know, but it's it's a reasonable one, I've used it before. Um, oh, at least 7,000. Um, so let's say you wanted, you have a roommate, so you want like a two bedroom. Uh, Alright, there are a lot of apartments in Houston apparently that have two bedrooms. So you can figure out what area you need to live in. to live over near us because it'll be cheaper. So you can see the difference in like, you can also like look at different areas of the city and see where the different price ranges are, right? So like if you want to live down in like the med center, it's going to cost you a lot. Um, depending on where you are, depending on what part of it. Um, or like Midtown's like probably worse. Uh, yeah, Midtown. Yeah, so like, yeah, so you can come up, <laughs> you can come up here. Dollars. There you go. Yeah, so you can apparently get some two bedroom place up by Carter for ten thousand dollars a month. You should it? That's a terrible idea, but you could. Um, um, okay. What's a good price range? Um, it very much depends on a lot of things, right? Location, where you are to your. What's a good ratio size? Of there, there. It depends a lot. Um, like, I live in a pretty crappy apartment, and I think my rent right now is, what do I pay? I pay 640 and it's gone up quite a lot, actually, from where it used to be. <laughs> um, it was super cheap for a while. Um, okay, you can see, that's probably it. Let's see. 
Yeah. Vista on Gessner. So right now, yeah, if I wanted a two-bedroom place at my apartment complex, it would be closer to like a thousand. Uh, and I mean, that's not a good apartment complex by any means. It just happens to be a minute away from the school. So. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know that it's a good rule of thumb, but a lot of apartment complexes will require that you your monthly income is like three, four, or five times whatever they are expecting you to pay. So at least be making, you know, so at, at most probably 33% of your monthly income. Yeah, you wouldn't want much more than that. That would be... That's already pushing it. That would All be, I want to do is live there. Um, like the right, and again, these are two bedrooms right now, so this is if you have a roommate, so you're splitting that. If you wanted to live alone, It'll switch. Studio. It'll get studio. cheaper. Studio, you're, you're really... Yeah, I mean, you could live in a studio. That's up to you. Um, Houston doesn't have a lot of studios, actually. There's a few. But we have What's the studio. difference oh. between, like, a studio and... Studio, literally, there's no Just door between one. where your bed is and, like, everything else in your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> like, your bathroom has a door, normally. Okay. Normally, it. everything else like your, not like your shower. Door. Right. Right. <laughs> like, you, maybe, you, probably, you may have a closet. <laughs> like oh my hotel room. Is one. right it's basically close to our hotel room right um, it's like a, it's like a suite um, so if you're depending on what city you're living in if you're living in New York you're lucky to have a studio because they have no room right Houston we have a lot of land there's not a lot of studios in general just because we have a lot of space yeah, so putting a wall putting a wall up and a door between even if it's a really tiny apartment it's super easy to do because we have a lot of space um, so square footage is relatively cheap in Houston compared to most big cities um, What's up? Where are their lines? Mm -hmm. uh, those are the different cities, I think. The, the like different areas. Yeah, so it's like I think that's Bel Air City limits. So like West, West, West U. Okay. Yeah, so those are the other cities. All right. The little enclaves, whatever they want to call. Them. Um. So you live in the national park. Okay, I'm gonna click on some random ones so we can figure out. Where I'd right. like to live on. All right. Say we wanted to live at the cave at Briar Fort. Oh, the cove. <laughs> <laughs> cave. That's a weird name for a park. <laughs> All right. The cove makes way more sense. I live in the cave. <laughs> the cove makes way more sense. <laughs> Um, let me see if this has, I don't know if this actually tells you what is included or not. Oh, here we go, yeah, it does. Okay, so, right, so you're going to have to pay your, um, your rent every month, and you'll have to sign a lease. Um, so what normally happens is you're doing, um, the normal standard rate, so this is normally for a 12-month lease, um, not always, sometimes it's for, like, 13, um, so, like, they, like, keep you there an extra month, um, but it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, you're also going to have to put down your um, security deposit and sometimes some sort of like application fee when you actually apply to get the apartment. Um, so when you're asking about those things, you want to ask about what the total fee of like moving in is when you're calling them, when you go meet with them, et cetera. Um, you also want to figure out what the rest of the stuff is. Oh, so it actually, so apartments actually has it, which is nice. So like you have to pay $200 just for applying, like your $250 just for applying. If you have an animal, it's another oh three fifty. Um, one time though, which is Wait. reasonable because sometimes you have to pay monthly animal fees. Uh, there are ten dollar. Oh, there you go, ten dollar. If you have a dog and a cat, is that seven hundred dollar one yeah. time expense? Yeah, per as per animal. Oh my! Why do we have pets? Good question. <laughs> Twelve. <10. laughs> what about twenty cats? Um, <laughs> Right, so you're paying for, you're paying for a parking fee too. So this place parking, you're paying so for parking access to the right. yeah just un, yeah just access to a lot. So there's probably there may be a covered parking lot depending on where it is that it's you may have to pay more for. It's um, so it's at uncovered here, but there may be other fees that they don't have listed. No, it's a it's a it's oh, it is covered. So you don't oh. get a spot; you just get a tag. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Get uh, <laughs> or a rabbit. That's five. 350. That's 350. Oh, yeah. That's no, 350 for a dog or a cat. Get oh yeah, so if you just want to have, if you want to have uncovered, it's it, you don't have to pay the thirty-five dollars a month. Okay. Um, you do have a two pet limit total. Oh, Forty pound weight. Oh. Also, yeah. breeding weight restriction. Um, yeah, so it tells you the amenities and stuff like that. How do you get a 40 the other things it should tell you at some point no aggressive. is whether well, dog, what utilities are included. I don't know if it has that on here. Oh. Oh, that no. is a fat cat. <laughs> Is that 40 pounds per cat or per both cats? Per <laughs> cat. Nice cat. 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 It says cat select. 40 pounds. Wait a minute. What if you're the cat? <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't see it, the rest of it, but basically you want to also look at what utilities are included. So depending on where you're at, you're going to have to pay. Um, you almost always have to pay your own electric. I don't know of any place where electric's included, but it may exist. Um, $10,000. Yeah, even then it's probably not. Um, some places you'll have to pay gas, which is for your water heater or for your heater here, um, or your stove. 
Um, not every place has gas, but some places do. Um, you may have to pay a trash fee. Um, what was I missing? Water. Oh, water. Yeah, you may have to pay your water fee too. Um, some places it's included. So, like my apartment complex, I only pay electric. Everything else is included. Um, so, in theory, I can just leave my tap running if I hated the environment. Um, <laughs> it wouldn't cost me anything more. Um, Darn you guys. I shouldn't, but I could. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, yeah, so then you also have to pay some form of security deposit, which isn't on here either, which is normally. Um, first and last month's rent sometimes. Sometimes it's one month rent, sometimes it's two, it depends on where you're at. Um, and then when you end your, when you move out of the apartment, you normally like fill out a form, you make sure everything, nothing's damaged, they come in and do an inspection, and then depending on the place, you'll get some of the security deposit back. Um, there are some places where that just like would never happen, but <laughs> like, ideally it should. But you, it very much depends on the apartment. You want to read reviews ahead of time, see if it's actually good. Um, this guy really likes it. Some people, seven years. Yeah, but other people didn't. It doesn't show the bad reviews. No, it definitely does. There you go. But people don't like the management. This place says run. You know, so there, there's a mixture. You got to figure out. That's a warning. Some people. In. I could give those stories. Right. So you got to remember that, like. A lot of times, it's just like they had one bad interaction, or this person was just bad at being an apartment tenant, <laughs> and they're mad at the apartment complex for something that probably wasn't done. So you actually have to read it, not just look at the stars, because um, some people will really like it, some people won't. Um, yeah, so apparently they're harsh and overpriced, so maybe that's true. I don't know. Um, that one guy stayed here for seven years. Right, so some people really <laughs> like it, maybe he knows. You also don't know if that guy's crazy. Right, you don't know. All right, But a lot of people seem to like it, they think it's fine. Um, and so like you go there, you actually meet with the people, like you normally don't get an apartment on sight unseen, but sometimes you do. Uh, most of the time you don't. Um, um, oh, and then you will, you'll almost always have to pay, you will always have to pay for whatever your internet or TV or any of whatever that service you want is. Would you suggest cutting the cord and doing something like Sling or YouTube TV? <laughs> It very much depends on what your habits of watching are. What if I don't um, watch? What? Well, I, like, just over the air. Then you just also just do over the air. But I don't, like, just don't need a TV. You could also just not need a TV. Yeah, just, I mean, you don't need it. Yeah. Wa you could watch the radio you signals you come into your brain. I don't know what you're <laughs> <laughs> Feel free. You, you can just, uh, you can just read. listen to my book. Yeah, that never works. I mean, nowadays, like, you, you probably want some form of way to get on the internet. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want to just... I have a house with no internet, that's fine. You go to like McDonald's and feel like... If that's how you want to spend your budget, that Feel free. Budget master. Get a really large mobile data plan. Good work. That's not legal, but... What if they don't know? Still not legal, but it can work. But yeah, at some point you will probably have to pay somebody for internet. They do know, but they don't know how to stop. There's normally at least one people. There's only one person who can give you cable internet um, and cable TV, um, which for most of Houston is Comcast. For other places, it's now Spectrum because they bought up like everybody else. Yeah. Um, and there's Time Warner. They because they bought up and Time Warner, Breitbart, Charter, and somebody and else. I think. Verizon. Brought up Verizon brought had up. cable. Yeah. Verizon FiOS. Wait, Spectrum bought up FiOS? Yes. Oh, Google. I didn't know. Um, they canceled all that. Um, but I think it still oh, exists, but not split. Well, yeah, but yeah. What? Uverse and. Right. So ATT uh, Uverse TV. is TV over DSL lines, basically, or and fiber lines. They also own. And now they're, TV. Right. And now DirecTV, too, so you can do satellite. And there's there's lots of ways to do it if you want cable TV at all. Um, I think I pay Comcast basically for internet. I get some amount of cable TV. I have a cable box. It is not hooked up. Um, I don't use it, but it's cheaper than not having it, which didn't make any sense, but... What? Um, they want to, they want to try to, like... If I wanted, mind. yeah, so basically, if I wanted to have the same internet speed I have right now Just without the cable box, it would cost me more than having it with the cable Bundles, box. Bundles, It doesn't make any sense. Bundles. Yeah, because... <laughs> It, it, it doesn't make any sense, but I was literally like, I just want really fast internet. He's like, all right, but you have, you get if you get cable, it's like forty dollars a month. I was like, that's way better. Oh, no. I will I will have this thing that I'll sit in uh, under my TV and not plug in. It's fine. Um, and there's your like really weird places like what straight kids. But that's like yeah, that's corporate stuff mostly. Um, yeah, internet is not the cheapest thing. It, 
it's if you want really fast stuff, it's normally somewhere around a hundred dollars a month for either AT and T fiber stuff or the fastest Comcast line yeah. somewhere near there. Um, you, you yeah. Yeah. If you bug, if you bug the cable companies, they also give you make you pay less money because they want to keep you around. Um, so you literally just like call them and say, hey, I want to pay less money, and they'll figure out how to make so you send me to customer there, attention. Oh yeah, there are several yeah. like different tiers of TV service. Yes. It's crazy. There are lots and lots of packages. You can get roped into spending way too much money if you do it on accident. Don't do that. On X. Uh, yeah, like you can pay a lot of money. Like, and especially if you want like in multiple TVs in your house and stuff, because they charge you random V boxes. And like, if you yeah. want it, like AT and T charges extra for HD. Right, and like you can get charged extra for running a modem. Like, there, lots of companies will just try to get you to pay little things that you won't realize. So one of the things you want to do before signing up for anything is to actually ask what is going to be my monthly payment. For total everything included, please, and like make the person on the phone calculate all of that, uh, because it is not the number they tell you. That's the same thing that's gonna happen with like your cell phone plans and everything else, right? Like you see the ads for cell phone plans all the time with oh, that's all the fees. Like there's a little lemonade one where like it's like two dollars for lemonade. That'll be seven fifty or whatever he tries to charge the guy for lemonade. Uh, okay. Um, this one's super fast, but it's something that'll happen to you at some point, and you'll be annoyed by it and not know what to do. Um, Largely, they're not that bad. Once you start driving, avoid parking tickets, avoid speeding tickets. Um, like, you have to read the signs. The signs are often confusing for parking, but you have to read them, figure out if you're allowed to park there. Um, We're really good at it now that we were always at engineering. It's like, <laughs> you can only park there on Sunday, and then you drive home. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, you can park there between this time and this time, but not this time and this time. There's the weird ones where you're not allowed to park between, like, 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., and you're like, why? And then you realize, oh, it's for, like, people going to bars or something, but like, they're weird street signs. Um, I saw one that was like, no parking here the second Thursday of every month. Yeah, there was like streets cleaning and stuff, um, I saw so the signs sign get complicated. That said, thou shalt not park here, or thou shalt not park, and it was that church that I went to. Um, All right. Church? They were like, uh, thou shalt not park. Thou <laughs> shalt uh, not park. But at some point, you're probably going to end up with a parking ticket. Most of the time now, again, it's much more convenient than it used to be because you can either just, um, for like Houston's, for Houston City parking, I got one parking ticket once when I was actually looking for an apartment or house or something, which was super annoying. I was in like looking at the house for like 20 minutes and managed to get a parking ticket. Uh, yeah, I was, I was not pleased. But it was, it was cheap. It was like $30 or something, which is not that bad. Um, but now you just pay it online, which is very convenient. Um, so you don't have to go anywhere. Nothing crazy happens. Um, if they're small cities you drive through, which is a lot of what ends up happening to people is you are driving down some highway and you get pulled over at some speed trap and they hide the sign or something and it's not good. Um, there's several small cities in Texas where things like that are known to happen. Um, where a lot of the revenue that the police department brings in is just from people driving through their town and giving them a speeding ticket. Um, Even if they're not speeding? I mean, no, they are speeding, but it, they make it to where like they, one, it's on a wider open road than the speed limit should be, or it's lower than it would be on a normal road, things like that. Gotcha. Uh, they have to just like camp out on the right. entrance ramp and wait for you to speed up to get in, and then they ding you. Uh, so it's like 75, and it's a couple of warning signs, and it's like 55 for a very you know, two minute stretch, right. then right back up to 75. Right. But if you whip on through that 55 section, Correct. you're almost uh, certainly going to get it. Right. And so keeping a clean record helps too, because like I've been pulled over for speeding twice in my life. I've not got a ticket either time because they're like, okay, you have a relatively clean record. You weren't going that much over. It's fine. Uh, I'm pretty sure the warnings are on. Like, yeah, even the warnings and stuff will be on there. Like they'll mark you and stuff um, in their police system. The truck. Um, <laughs> Wait, so when I didn't get a ticket for rear ending someone, that's still on my record? What do you mean you didn't get a ticket for rear-ending someone? My, I rear-ended someone. My right. mom's like, oh, you didn't get a ticket? That's surprising. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah, the police, police showed, showed up. up. Right. Okay. I don't know. I've never, I, I've never been in a situation like that. I don't know if you get tickets for that, honestly. Maybe you do. I don't, I don't know if you need to get pulled over. Like, what if it's just police, like, behind you? Like... How do you know? <laughs> if the lights are on behind you, if the lights are behind you, you should be getting over anyway, right? Okay. Because you have to get out of their way. And then if they follow you, if they means... pull over behind you, okay. then, then yeah. Um, also, they have the spotlight. There a couple things you should know. Yeah, and if you if you if it's at night and you're alone, etc. If you don't feel comfortable being pulled over, put your hazard lights on, and you can drive to a well lit place. Like you're you're not re you're not required to like pull over immediately onto the side of the road or something, and you shouldn't pull over into a place that it may be dangerous. Right. 
technically illegal if you're driving with your hazard lights on. No, if the police car's behind you, I think they're going to be all right. <laughs> like, if there's, if there's reasons for you to drive with your hazard lights on, it's okay to do. Like, it's not illegal to drive with your hazard lights if there's actually a hazard. Like, <laughs> they're there for you to not use. If it's an unmarked police car, like if they've just got the light going in the window, you don't officially have to pull over. Um, and then there's, then you actually any, should call the police department to confirm that it's... Because any yeah. schmuck can put some red and blue lights in the car. Exactly. Pull um, over into a police station and just call the police. Yeah, like in general, <laughs> like if you're on a crowded highway, etc., like if it's in the middle of the bright daylight and there is a police car behind you, you, you can, if you can get, if you can pull over far enough, like if there's enough of a shoulder and you can do it, it's reasonable, you can go off at the next exit, go into a gas station, whatever needs to happen. Um, that's totally just fine. Don't too. speed past a Chevy Tahoe and you're fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> don't speed past dot dot you know whatever dot charger Chevy Tahoe's that's Crown Vicks, Vicks yeah and, um, no those are those are retired <laughs> those are retired yeah. <laughs> uh, but in general you shouldn't be speeding very fast anyway uh, what about the helicopter really really like, like there's a spotlight from a helicopter on me should I <laughs> <laughs> no that means uh, you go past you go past <laughs> You're on TV. Yeah, yeah. Largely, you should be avoiding any of these tickets by driving <laughs> safely and securely. Um, there are times where you are probably going to speed in your life. Know that there are risks in doing so, and you may get a ticket. It's not good for your insurance. It's very bad for your insurance if you do. Um, also, in general, it's very important. Don't hit anybody with your car. That's the easiest thing. Don't hit people. <laughs> Which we don't hit. <laughs> 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 No, in general, you shouldn't. But if you do end up getting an accident, that's one thing that's not on this list, but should be. Um, so most of the time, um, most of the time, it's pretty easy to deal with. Um, you should call the police no matter what. Not 911, but the police department, um, which you can look up on your phone. Um, it, if it, 911, if somebody's injured or if there's a reason for it to be an emergency, please do. Um, no, they don't always come. The police are kind of... In, Everyone's while well, they're annoying. So I was in what amounted to a hit and run over on Bel Air, where I was part. I was stopped at a stoplight behind another car. There was a car behind me stopped at the same stoplight. Someone else came in, rear-ended them, hit them into me. That last car, who was the person who did it, sped off. Um, so then it was just me and the other two cars there. You should chase them. That's not how that works. Um, <laughs> we pulled over enough to where we were in like the left turn lane over on the lights, um, so we were basically out of the way. Um, and then we called the police, but we waited for a good hour, and they never showed up. Um, and, you're like, All right, and the other person had to go, so I got there. I took photos of everything, got their insurance information, got my insurance information, um, gave the, gave them my insurance information um, in case they needed. It. They shouldn't need it or anything because they ran into me. Um, and then went to the police station to file a report. Um, there's not a whole lot they can do because they didn't have a license plate or anything. Mm -hmm. um, after that was when I got the dash cam and installed it in my car because then I would have had the other person's license plate. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. Wait, so when you call 911, which branch does it automatically go to? It just goes to dispatch. So 911 just goes to dispatch and then they figure out who they need to actually send. I. Would you suggest recommending in a? Uh, would you recommend investing in a dash cam? I like mine. It was cheap. It was like twenty dollars, and it records things. So if there ever is someone speeding away from me that hit me, I have, have cool their license plate. Their I have cool footage, and I have their license plate well, number. Would you recommend one for the front and back, or just? I don't have one in the back, but in one. theory you could. Um, I never thought about that. I'd probably do it. Three sixty. <laughs> like. Fusion on top. <laughs> yeah, just get a you just get a fusion when it comes out and mount it to the top of your car. Yeah, the three sixty degree footage all the time. Um, it's very useful having friends in case when we go into something. Oh, she's like, call this person. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, like filing the police report wasn't that bad. I basically just went into the station and like filled out some paperwork. They did not, they were not super, the person at the desk was not very competent, they did not know what was happening. Um, I was trying to explain the situation, they, I had to like, get another person to come out and do it, it was kind of awkward. Um, Isn't that what they're here there for? Yeah, you would think, you? you would think. They were, they were not, they were not useful. Oh, another thing. No guy. It might be like a very small thing, but um, when you're 
going, when you see, like, the speed limit, like, is it safe to go over just, like, five over? Is that fine? Or, like, five below? Legally, no. Will you get pulled over? Most of the time, no. Okay. But if you're, like, random little small towns where there's speed traps, probably. Like, <laughs> well, like, if you're just going, like, down the street, down Houston, and it just says 35 and you go yeah, 40, is Bell that Lake. fine? Or if you're on Bell Lake, somewhere. Legally, right? no. Just, just, Are you I able just, to do it? Probably yes. If you're on Bell Lake, like, and everyone's driving 80, 80 to time. you drive 70. Right. Largely, if you've driven enough, most of the time you're not even, like, knowing exactly what... I, I can't tell you the exact <laughs> speed limit of most of the roads, but you know roughly what speed you should be going based on traffic and how big the road is, et cetera. Like, you've also, driven enough to know where you're... As you drive more, speed. you know where the cop side, too, so at those areas you can slow down. <laughs> you also just, yeah. should just not... Yeah, where you're going, you're not... in Most of the time in your life, you're not that much in a rush to go anywhere, right? Like, so just don't go that fast. Must curfew um, <laughs> In general, driving, one of the biggest things you can do to make sure you're not the one hitting anybody is to just stay really far back from people. Like, that's the easiest thing to do, right? Like, even if you have to slow up, Giving that space between you to where you know you're able to stop no matter what happens is the biggest thing that you can do. Uh, other, uh, otherwise, you can do a lot of stuff. And like I said, you probably are going to, at some point, break a lot of traffic laws in your life. Like, you're probably going to drive down the wrong way on a one-way street at some point. It's Correct it quickly, it um, <laughs> but it's probably going to happen, right? Like, it's less when we're in the bus, huh? when we were, like, driving to that one place and Alan was like, no one remembers that? What? No? Okay, never mind. <laughs> I don't think I did it on the bus. Did I do it on the bus? Yeah, the St. Agnes bus. I drove the wrong way on a one-way street. I don't think I did that. <laughs> but That's where, where, where were we going? <laughs> we were going to, like... I don't remember. I feel like I did. It's like for a demo or something. I feel like you're the only one who remembers this. Just trying to believe Or no, it might have been, like, a Vex thing. A Vex, um... Okay, so. apparently this may or may not have happened. I don't remember this, so, alright. Uh, what? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but in general, you should be, it, it is going to happen. Try to avoid it. Not hitting other people means it's relatively okay. Like, I'm pretty sure at one point I drove over a median before. That was bad. Don't do that. Like a, like a curb one. <laughs> like, like, I made a left where you clearly shouldn't have. <laughs> There's a, curb in the middle of the road. Um, <laughs> when I first started driving, that was bad. Uh, we, got, uh, we were, we stopped by, I think, by the zoo? But like the park next to the Herman Herman Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we ended up being there until after they'd locked all the gates. That's not good. So we drove around and all the gates were locked. But then we like were debating whether we drive over the median or find a random like guy to see if he can unlock, open, unlock one of the gates for us. What did you do? We found a guy on the That is better than destroying your car. Uh, really? Were you in the Herman Park or were you like in the old Zen Garden, the recent ones? I've, I've been there before, but that wasn't this time. Uh, oh, no, because it's in the parking lot. There's parking lot gates. Um, there's, there's, depending on which parking lot you're at. Yeah, it was one SUV and a Honda Fit, so. <laughs> the Honda Fit wasn't making it at all. Um, <laughs> okay, so all right, well, before we go and talk about car stuff outside, um, let me see if there's anything else on the Facebook posts of people recommending well, so you don't carry power tools. Just bust make a post of like what like should I eat? Wait, the recycle rush t-shirt. Okay. So, all right. Other things that. Oh, come on. Girls. That's all. Yeah. Why did they do it that way? I mean, it's because you exactly stack up. I mean, I'm aware that's what it says, but like. Why is there a water bottle? It's totally. Okay, so there are 52. There, are, there are 52 comments on. This post. So we're gonna go through this. All right. So things that people recommend you should know, so that you can look up on your own. Slash, we can talk about it if we want. Um, emergency planning, like if your house is on fire, or what to do in an auto accident. So we caught auto accident. If your house is fire, Touch number one thing, Run. please get out of your house. <laughs> you know, anytime anything you're near is on fire, get away from that thing. If you're, tra if you're trapped uh, in the second floor, how do you get away with the murder? If it's to the point where like it's actually burning down. Like if there's a if there's a fire in your kitchen, please grab the fire extinguisher that should be in your house. Please have a fire extinguisher in your house slash apartment wherever you are and put out the fire. 
Um, or if it's like a grease fire thing, you cover it baking soda. There's lots of ways to do it. Um, don't put water on a grease fire, please. It's a bad idea. What if a robot battery is leaking? We're going to have to shift it to clean it. Already messed up. Um, um, something about, we'll talk about that in cars. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about cars in the movie, clearly. Emergency Best plan. Uh, oh, wow. De-escalating conflict, I'm not entirely sure I know how to teach that. Um, it's just one of those but the general rule is you should not ever have to like, fight anybody. Like, I don't know why you would. Don't. It says in an auto accident. Uh, or like road rage? No, it says like if people walk up to you in a parking lot. Oh, in a public space. Right. Yeah. Looking for looking yeah, to change right. or like stoplights, etc. But I don't know why that. So sounds like you? Learn the what? Wait, what's that? No, they're like if somebody like if just somebody walks up to you and like asks you for change or something or starts oh. talking to you in a parking lot. In that case, be respectful. Either if you don't have money or you don't feel like giving them money, politely tell them that. Okay. Most time, it's not a big deal, right? Like there's no the conflict doesn't really happen if you're nice and kind to people in general. Maybe they meant right. like conflict of interest. Like they want money, but you <laughs> oh, don't. Yeah, that was no. I mean, like there are sometimes where somebody is aggressive with you or something. Like it does happen. Largely, it won't. Right? Like it, it's a bad situation, especially if they're putting you in a place where they're you're afraid for some reason. That's not good. Um, but in general, if you can, be polite, be kind. You don't necessarily have to give them anything, but literally just being respectful to them. They are another human being. Yeah, Even if, they, if you don't know what's going on in their life to get them to that situation, etc. Um, so you should be able to be reasonable, and normally nothing happens. Like There's been very few times in my life where anything like that, even if we've not given them a dollar or something, I didn't have it, yeah. has ever escalated past, have a nice day, sir, and walk away. Um, but if it does get worse than that, right, you, if you can get into your car, get into your car, you leave the situation. Um, if you need to get to somewhere where it's more public, etc., if you are scared for some reason, like if it is a threatening situation, figure out how to go to where there's more people, figure out how to go where it's more well lit. I had my sister once. We just pulled in a police station and just drove away, and I was like... Right, if there are other people, yeah, get, getting to a police station, getting to a well-lit place where there are more people around. Uh, most people aren't going to do stuff to you if they're going to be seen by a lot of people doing it. Uh, getting airplane tickets. Um... Buying airplane tickets? Go to Priceline.com. Yeah. Um, yeah, you just do it online. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> like, for most it's things, you just figure out how to do it online. Right. Like, kayak is fine. Like, my, one of my first places normally kayak because it tra checks a bunch of other places, but there's oh, okay. other ones that do it too now. Uh, I'm pro that's probably old. I assume there's probably better ones now, but that's where I normally go. Uh, so, just have what, what sort of um, e easy, cheap dinner meals would you suggest? Like ramen or. <laughs> Um, you figure out what you like, right? Like, be, figuring out how to actually cook some stuff is useful in some way, right? Figu yeah, making, making pasta is super cheap. Yeah. Any sort of pasta. Carbonara is really easy to make. It's um, pasta, egg, and bacon. <laughs> bacon is uh, surprisingly expensive. Right. Um, rice, 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 any rice. Any rice. rice. Every day. Yes. Ooh. Dried beans are really cheap, man. Like, Dried beans are super cheap, but also way more complicated to cook, um, and it just take longer. It's, kind of it's, a, it's a more process. If you, um, if you want to do, if you, if you like beans a lot, I would recommend getting a pressure cooker. It makes it way faster. Flat breads are also really easy to make. Pressure cookers in general are really cheap. Uh, also very like a nice. crock pot or a slow cooker. Flat bread? Crock pots and slow cookers are good depending on what you're eating, because then you can, like, crock pot and slow cooker, if you do like eating meat, you can get cheaper cuts of meat and make them tender. Right, because if you can get like a whole like roast or something that is way harder to do in the oven, oh, yeah. gonna, um, it takes way more energy, which costs more. If we're gonna cook, put out all your ingredients because a fifteen minute recipe will turn into forty five minutes if you don't do that. Um, and you don't know if you have everything. Yeah, cooking takes a long time. Um, but yeah, in general, if if you end up just eating out a lot, your budget's gonna go up way higher. Um, Wait, which so is, is it advisable wrong. to like get like foil wrapped, like? uncooked food and then put it in your engine and then like get going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> because in my driver's ed class they're like, this is a brilliant idea. Just Wait, take food on I your engine. <laughs> Wait, is this a straight driving class? I'm not saying, no, 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 I'm okay. not saying you can't work. do it. I, but it, it's not something you should just be doing regularly. Like, I have no idea why that's just how you like cook all your meals. I mean, because you, you're not going to be able to control temperature or like potentially contaminants, it doesn't seem like a great plan. Like, 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 like say you're making chicken tacos. Yeah, it could work. Right. Quesadilla. Maybe like wrapped like, like, chicken. Get like and foil. Throw it in your chicken, engine. cheese, quesadillas. <laughs> not quesadillas. Okay. Throw it's, 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 it's not necessarily advisable to necessarily put anything in your engine compartment <laughs> that doesn't belong in your engine compartment. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because I, it would be very bad if you're driving down the street and then the the chicken quesadilla that you have in your indie park falls into like your like timing belt or something and gets caught. That doesn't seem like a good plan in general. Could you do it? Probably. I've seen YouTube videos. Should Maybe you do it? Should it? Just be a Probably not. Right? Like, if you if you have no other way to cook your food, and that's where you're at, feel free. If you own a toaster oven, I would recommend using that. Just cook in the dishwasher, Alan. I would recommend using a toaster oven or an oven or a microwave if you have any actual cooking appliance before using your dishwasher or car engine. What about just like charcoal and like cooking charcoal? I'm not going to go into a bunch on investing because that's not my foyer at all, and you probably are not doing that until later into college, uh, but you should in general, especially take advantage of anything your companies offer. If you get a full-time job, uh, you end up working somewhere, use your 401k, et cetera, that's very useful. What is 401k? Uh, it's 1, an investment plan, but what normally ends up happening, it's a, it's, there's, there are different tax rules on them, 401ks, IRA, RA, IRAs, et cetera. I don't know all the tax plans, but basically what normally ends up happening is you're able to put money in that doesn't count to your income tax anymore, uh, or it's not taxed on it, and then it's taxed later either when you withdraw it or how it's taxed differently, basically, so you're able to avoid some amount of taxes. Also, a lot of times your companies have matching funds in some way, so if they'll match however much you'll able to, whatever else they'll match, putting it in is basically just free money for you later in life. Uh, as much as you can. Right. That any anything that they're willing to match, you should clearly just do because they're giving you money. That's uh, you may not be able to use it for a couple of years. Right. Maybe not until you retire, but that's still fine. Where are they? Interest compounded annually. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what they would want me to talk about or have a healthy relationship, but I'm pretty sure a lot of that can boil down to be a reasonable person and like golden rule type stuff. So like, uh, treat people. Treat people, uh, and more, not necessarily necessarily that. So, like, I have a, somewhat of a problem with the golden rule, um, in that it's how treat people how you would want to be treated because you may want to be treated differently than other people. So, it really, should be treat people <laughs> kindly and how they want to be treated. Um, like royalty, right? Like, you can take some amount and do it with you know empathy and sympathy and treat them how you want to be treated. But ideally, if you were in their situation, etc., how would they want to be treated? Ellen, teach us how to iron a shirt. <laughs> I should learn how to iron <laughs> I can do it when I have to. I'm not good at it. Those are joke ones. Those don't count. Perez, like iron shirt and Elron jelly beans. My first one is right. Elron just takes over. Oh, yeah. Kind of get away Oh, loan stuff. Briefly, we talked a little bit about on credit cards. It's kind of the same thing. When you do get student loans, make sure you're actually paying them back. Um, like you'll be paying back your student loans every month, you'll have some amount of payment on them. Um, if you have a very high interest rate student loan for some reason, or any high, high interest rate loan, pay it back quicker than like the minimum payment so that you don't have to pay as much in interest. Um, having some loans is not necessarily a bad thing, so one of the loans that's on my credit report is my, the student loan I have, but it's at, I think it's at like 5% or something, so it's a pretty nice loan to have. Like it doesn't, it's a very small amount that recurs, it's not a big deal. Like, if I pay it out at the minimum, I'm only paying an extra $100 or something instead of paying it off right now. How much chili is $2 of chili? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, <he's> <laughs> that was just a joke. <laughs> um, but that's like a, like a jar, a can of chili is like a dollar. It's like two cans of chili. The thing is, like, if you buy more than Should I order all of my food during the hunt? Yeah, could you? Possibly. I don't know where you're at. Or what the amount of chili. Yeah, if you buy the ingredients. You spend like $50, but you get way more on your $2, uh -huh. and you just got like $2 of the chili. Yeah, that's right. That's true. So, you shouldn't buy $50 worth of chili ingredients no matter what you're doing. That's a lot of money in chili ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, having, having some canned staples around is very convenient, because things like, like, you should have some amount of stuff in case you don't, can't go to the grocery store, you can grab something from your pantry and make a good meal sauce. at all times, right? Like, uh, roll the Canned staple, like staple food. I know. No, I know. No, oh, no, not a canned staple. Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry, not a can of staples. Or we are out of staples. Staple, <laughs> staple foods. So like the the, the can. Like not, 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 not yeah, can networking. Just have a stockpile yeah. of spam. Uh, oh, no. Spam probably not the best, but you could if you like spam. Right. Is it speed power maneuverability? 
Has a Are you there? Would you recommend getting something like Amazon Prime? With the um, I like Amazon Prime, but you can also, if your parents have Amazon Prime, you can just add your account to it, so you don't even have to pay the student discount. Uh, that, but it seems like there's a lot involved in it. Shoot, it's not that much. It's like a. It, it it's definitely. Like, I tried to do it like a couple months ago. Yeah, it's like, like did it work? name and email. Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I don't think they have changed it. It took me like I like, literally logged into my mom's account. And was like, no, no like, and like, it's like it's not like getting you the shipping or whatever. It got me the shipping. Uh, oh, I, it it took me like thirty seconds. seconds. Uh -huh. What? Need an address too. Yeah, like I literally just I had my account. I had my mom's account. I logged into my mom's account. Filled in mind. No, no, because you mentioned it. Like I tried to do it, and for the life of me, I couldn't figure it out. I, uh, I can see if like I don't know if they've changed it, but it, it's still working on mine. I still use theirs for the free shipping. So. Uh, like I could pay for Prime, but I don't get anything from it, so I don't care. They have the shipping. So. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, what were the other ones that were on here? So there's one about. How to listen and learn from other people and their experience. They were learning that. Right? You're literally doing it now. <laughs> um, we talked about treating everyone with respect. Those things are reasonable. Um, other useful ones in general. Your better, your best option is going to be to be honest. Like I don't know why. Again, these are things you should have learned in like kindergarten, but people don't remind you. Um, like you can get out of a lot of situations by just like telling people what your situation is and what what happened. Um, you don't need to like lie or come up with big schemes to do anything. They normally don't work. Um, yeah, because I think after you lie, there's just more lying. Right. Yeah, the cover the, the cover up is almost always worse than the crime. Right. Like that, you hear that for a reason. Uh, but in general, most people have been through like whatever you're doing in some way or can relate to it. Like most of you are reasonably good people, to my knowledge. Yes. You're not doing anything <laughs> crazy bad that people are going to be against you for, right? Like, if you have an interest in doing something, it's probably something someone else has either done or, like, thought about doing or wanted to do. Like, they're probably not going to be, like, mad at you for wanting to do the thing. Um, um, oh, in apartments, we didn't talk about renter's insurance. Renter insurance is super cheap and super useful. Um, on a case, if you'd actually end up needing it. But basically, if you have homeowner's insurance, it like covers your whole home and like if somebody were to sue you because they got damaged on your property and stuff like that. Um, renter's insurance basically covers if something happens to your apartment, if somebody breaks in and steals stuff, they can replace it. So like, if someone breaks in and steals your TV, they can replace it. How does insurance um, work? How does insurance work? Yeah. Um, you pay for insurance, right? You're paying um, for like car insurance and stuff. It's every, you pay every month or every six months, whatever your payment plan is. Um, for renter's insurance, I don't, I pay every year. Um, and then if you need something that your insurance covers, so like if somebody were to break into my house or if I get water damage or something to my stuff in my apartment, I would go online or call the person or whatever and file a claim with them and then they give you money to replace whatever it is that got damaged or they give you money to settle whatever it is basically that was damaged by your insurance plan. When should we get life insurance? It's up to you. Um, like I don't have life insurance because no one depends on me so like... Like there's not, no one's depending on my income yeah. to do it. So if you have a family and kids, it makes way more sense because then if you get hit by a bus, they kind of need to be able to deal with your funeral and deal with being able to get their life back on track. So, my idea for renters insurance, yeah. if someone breaks in, yeah, like so. Is is anything that's stolen covered, or is there just certain there's a there's a limit, and I think you have to and you, sometimes you have to list stuff. It depends on what's. But like there's so definitely a cost. If limit someone were to break into your apartment yeah. and steal your two hundred dollar four K TV from China, yeah, would insurance cover that? Yeah. Okay. And I would tell them I had this TV. It was stolen. Which thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> Usually, like if they stole cash, you'll only get like two or three hundred bucks max back. So don't just. Kind of cash right, yeah, I mean, there has to be limits and they have to be able to prove that you, like, had the thing, right? Like, you do have to file an insurance limit and make it so that the insurance company believes you actually had it, right? So, like, depending on what you're doing, so, like, when you have, when you insure bigger stuff, you take photos of it, you send them a list of everything you have, like, if you have a lot of valuable things, like, if someone broke into my apartment, they could steal everything and, like, the insurance company would be out, like, a thousand bucks, they probably don't care, but, like, <laughs> to replace my, like, laptop and TV. Uh, it's not like I have a ton of, like, Fancy jewelry or anything <laughs> around my apartment. 
Um, we don't know if you can So it's like there's cheaper insurance, but it doesn't cover all the stuff. In it. It's only like well, your apartment goes on the plane. Right. Yeah, so like you want to know, you, you talk to, basically, they'll, they'll, anytime you're getting a plan for anything, right, just like your cell phone bill or running an apartment or anything else you're going to do, you need to look at everything it says in your opening checking account. Actually read all the stuff. Like, it's a lot, but you should actually read it all before you actually sign it. Um, in general, reading forms before you sign them is a good idea um, for all things. Um, that it works for health insurance and everything, too. As a renter, are you required to have renter's insurance? Um, most apartment complexes that are in any way reputable, yes. <laughs> all, no. They also, like, so I'm pretty sure mine requires it, but they don't check. So, like, I'm guaranteed there's a bunch of people in my apartment that don't have it. Um, but they told me I was supposed to. I also would not not have it. Like I've used this, and I've used the same people for the last for like forever. So like it's fine. I don't even like. I think they call me every once in a while, but I'm like whatever. Just take my money. You know what to do. No <laughs> trouble. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't. I don't. I don't need to talk to you. Um, um, something about life is unfair. <laughs> I mean, okay. it's true, but you should know that. Um, I think we've lived long enough to know. Yeah, largely life is unfair, but that's it's not necessarily a bad thing that life is unfair. People have different needs. Fair would be a strange way to deal with it. Uh, what else is on here? Um, buying a car, asking for a raise, how to do a job interview. That that seems like a lot of stuff. <laughs> how to study? Question mark. I'm not first for that. Um, <laughs> I just want iron shirt, Alan. Uh, said he needs to learn how to. Yeah, there's YouTube videos. You put it on the dryer for 10 minutes, <laughs> take it out. <laughs> that looks good. It also works. Closed steamers work, whatever. You <laughs> could literally put that for everything you need to do. Yeah, but, I mean, ideally, that was one of them, is actually where to ask for help. Now that you have YouTube, you should, anytime you need to know anything, it's super easy. Because <laughs> there's like All a million words. videos for whatever you want to learn how to do. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's so rare that you can't find somebody else who has already made a very detailed tutorial on whatever it is you're trying to figure out. <laughs> um, I think that covers most of the stuff that we're going to do in here. Um, someone said you should wear sunscreen. Um, yes. That somewhat varies on your melanin level. <laughs> My friends, this is how much pigment you have. Uh, <laughs> How do you get away with murder? Like whether or not your mother's a dermatologist. <laughs> <laughs> right. Either way, you should wear some amount of sunscreen depending on how long you're going to be in the sun. Some people should wear it every single day. <laughs> uh, I only need to wear it if I'm out for a long time. Still go outside. Um, okay. Any other questions you want to answer here before we go talk about jumping a car and changing a tire? Are we going to go out to a car? Yeah, I'm going to pull my car out. Hi, or we can do somebody else's car. Do you want to do a car? car? I have oh, no, I have a suburban. You don't have to do it. There's a little black dot on yours because the car is going to be so scary here. Could we take a peek too? Oh, look at that. So like that sits in here so that it doesn't shift around a lot? Is there one on like the other side? Yeah, there should be one on every side. For every there, should be a, there should be a point roughly for every. Should I just jack up your, that's how it's your workout. Ideally you want to do it somewhere along the frame. Just Every single day you swap off of the Michelin. This one doesn't have a Michelin. I think this Honda doesn't build in. No thank you. I'm going to use that Honda for my Honda. I don't know. So this thing hooks in here. This has a little thing like that. And then you're able to... I don't get it screwed up like it just did. I think you put it in backwards. Uh, not backwards. Or there. Just not right. Up. Yeah. And then if you tighten it, it raises the jack. The what now? And you should be able to tighten jack. it like rotate. Probably right, jack. Like so. Such so a jack. Yes. That's a wrench. I thought he was like referring uh, to a specific part. Of while the jack, you're, while it's the not jack. actually lifting any weight, you can just turn this part and it's fine. Uh, but we want to put it under where it's going to be. Also, you want to be on the flat ground. So much for that. Is it flat here? Flat ground is also good. Flat. Do you want to do this on a hill? Flat enough. Is this flat enough? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, you don't want to do it on too big of a hill. Is your e brake on, by the way? Like your parking brake? You know how to turn it on, right, Mary? Yeah. This CRV should just be the handle. No, there's also the new ones where it's a button. Really? Oh, gosh. I'm, the heat's unbearable. I'm going to hide. All the way. Is that all the way? Okay, when you park, in general, you should put your parking brake on. I mean, you don't really need to if you're on a hill. In general, you should put your parking brake on. If you, okay, so if you don't have your parking brake on when you park, right. if any, for some reason your car moves at all, it's all being stopped by your transmission. Right. Which means it's not as bad. It's the parking fine. brake for a reason. <laughs> Just replace the transmission. <laughs> <laughs> to release it, you push the button. Right behind the spare tire. Not all the way down. Stairs. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but the car that I usually drive, it's actually basically where my clutch would be. Yeah, mine's, mine's my left foot puddle, yeah. Uh, most big like SUVs and stuff, it's a lot of times with the middle. If you, if you have something where you have like a center console and don't have this, uh, oh, Alan's a lot of times driving the seat. Um, yeah, I don't really know how. I've done it like once. It's, I know, like, I know the off gas, but I've never, it's never been my shift, daily driver. Off clutch gas. Alright, so, yeah, I already know how to do this, I've already changed it. This will get reasonable. Oh yeah, you, you were up and we did too. Okay, so if, if people want to look, and they can turn that a few more times too, and get it closer to up. You can look under, there's a little black spot where we're basically putting it where the jack point can go. Oh, okay. Okay, like a black um, Oh, and actually before we do this, because we're, if we're going to actually change it, um, you loosen the lug nuts before you get it off the ground. If you try to loosen them when they're if they're tight, and you try to loosen them when they're above the ground, spin the you'll wheel. spin the tire because <laughs> not, there's no weight of the car on it. Uh, Don't you want to do it whenever the tire is still on the ground, but less pressure is on it? Um, to loosen it, no. Like right now, you can loosen it. You're fine. Okay. Because nothing's gonna happen. And then you would raise it up and do fine. Like okay. you don't need to take them off, but you just need to loosen them. All right. uh, and then once it's all the way up, you would take them off. Um, which we can do, so you would come in and loosen just like any other nut. Um, Star pattern. Yeah, we normally loosen not directly next to each other. Um, so you go around. That's directly next In some sort of a pattern. Not star mouth. No, because I went here, 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 here. Yeah, that's directly next to it. Yeah, but it's the star. Uh, you can't do it any other way. I like if you have like locking nuts. Yeah. You just kind of push down on it. Wait, but you can't. Yeah, we have to apply lock tight. You do that, 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 yeah. then that, then that. Yeah. You can, yeah, but it doesn't matter. matter. You should have switched the third and the fifth one. No, but... yeah, he's just teaching us how. If you switch three and five, <laughs> then you can. Make sure you can actually this. This is your car, so you may have to do it. Oh. So make sure you can actually loosen that. Go, Mary. Wow. Did you all of them? Like... I think that was the only, I think it was the last yeah, one. Yeah, that was the last one. Right? That was the last one. Yeah, I think the rest have Yeah, so basically you do that on all of them. And then we're going to turn up the jack before it actually gets off the ground. If people want to keep going and get it jacked up. It's your car, Mary. Mary, it's Whatever. your car. Don't put your also teaching <laughs> yoga. Oh, yeah. Is this camera supposed to be on? Yes. Yay. It's recording the entire event. Oh, that's Where do I turn it? Right. Tidy, tidy, tidy. So now on the Spectrum okay. YouTube channel, how to change the tire. We should make a full on. It has to go on underneath the dimple, right? What? The black one. You want to be on the little dimple block? Because then it just doesn't, it doesn't shift around. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's anywhere on the frame, you're going to be fine for okay. the most part. Like, uh, if you were jacking up your car to where you were to like do work on it and stuff, it's way more important. Like you would make sure you have jack stands and stuff. Like you never want to be under a car that's just being supported by like a scissor jack like that. Uh, it's very easy for that to like kick out and like fall, and then your car, and then you're trapped under your car. Um, if you're going to actually do work on your car for some reason, you want to be on metal jack stands, which are basically like think like speaker stands, except they can hold a car, uh, and they're way smaller, but they have like a pin that goes through them, and like you can hold the whole weight. And it's like a metal pin, so it's not just that screw thread supporting the whole weight of the car. Like a steel pin? Yes. I see a lift up. Oh, oh yeah. So strong. Someone else can do it too. So yeah, you should all make sure yeah. you can actually, make sure you can actually do it. This is the hard yeah. 
does hurt you. Like you have the extra handle there just to get you toward the slow pump. Here, Olivia. Hey. Put some spoof in there. Do you know when it's good? The tire will be off the ground. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> what else? I call after Jose. No, I do. <clears throat> well, I just yeah. called it. <laughs> just, just lift it up. Just lift up the car. Your hands. Just uh, yeah. It looks like it's almost it. there. Okay, and then he said, he said you already got it. We're probably gonna not actually put that tire on because that just is a lot of work. So we're gonna take this one off and put it back on. Okay. But it's the same thing except that would go on. And then you take this, throw it in your back, drive to whatever tire place you use. Discount tire works. Um, oh, in general, you should also be like every, not necessarily every month if you have relatively new tires in your car, but every two or three months, just drive by one of the tire places and tell them to check your pressure and fill up your tires. Like it's free. Um, it's like you just drive by discount tire, they pull you in real fast, hook it up to the compressor. It takes five minutes, and they check if your tires have any leaks or if anything. Can you also wrong do that like a gas station or something? Yeah, but you have to pay then, and you have to get it's out of really your car. Cheap though, isn't it? Yeah, but you have to get out of your car and do it, and you and like the compressor at the gas station is way worse than the one at the tire place. Do it for the, a living. the tire place, yeah, they do it for a living. It's entirely free. Entirely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. They do it tirelessly. Uh, discount Tire does a good job of it. I normally go every couple, oh. like before any big trip, every couple months or so. Yes, I better Whenever tell my I see sister. it, we just drive by. I say they she probably has do it for free. <laughs> what? They will do it for free. They will do it for free. Yeah. Oh. He hasn't even here. Uh, No. Oh. You have a lot of you have a lot of, lot of suspension travel, man. <laughs> <laughs> Want to do it? Is it? It is in the very. Right, oh. Yeah, we're still good. You yeah. just have a lot of suspension travel. Yeah, it's because of the SUV. No, I get it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my car would be up like that. <laughs> You're close. It's off. Oh, now it's off. Okay, so it's okay. it's far. It's. Yeah, it, it could, you can slide it off, probably. All right, so leave that bit and just get the... We have lifts on. All right, so then these, you just spin out each one, right? So people want to spin out each nut. Then don't lose the nuts. That's one of the most important parts. What happens if you do lose a nut? Uh, if you need to drive on, like, um, or if you need to drive on three or four, you could. You shouldn't. What about um, two? You could. You shouldn't. <laughs> one. No. You could, you shouldn't. Um, <laughs> I would, like, anything you're doing, like, avoid highway speeds, get to a tire place as soon as you can to replace it. Take it out so actually what happens, if you were to lose all five, you steal two or three from the other wheels, put them on this one. What if you lose all five on all four of your wheels? Then you should not drive. <laughs> I don't want to slump. If you, have no, if you have no lug nuts on your tires, you should not drive. One yeah. per tire. But yes, if you did manage to lose all five from a single tire, you have 15 that you can distribute through. <laughs> Four tires, and you can make it work. What if you have um, one per tire? Is that fine? Probably not. One like, per tire, but one the tire says two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at some point, you're, you're taking risks. You should be driving very slowly and getting to a tire place very quickly, or getting an Uber to an auto zone and buying some one. So, what if like a tire place is really far away, and you're using a spare tire? You like, slowly get there. Yeah, most of the spare tires are like you max speed like 50 miles an hour. Or and like max distance. And you can like drive 40. on it. Yeah, and you can drive on it for a while. Um, preferably you don't for a very long time. If you have to call a tow truck, you can. They're more expensive. Um, if it's just a tire, you probably don't want to call a tow truck. What if you have um, AAA? If you have AAA, yeah, then you can call AAA. It's still going to take you try? longer, right? Like, so normally what I normally do, so my note go-to is I have AAA too. If I do, if I've had a blowout, I had a blowout on, actually on Bel Air once. I was driving back over uh, here. That way there. I had a, yeah, I had a blowout on Bel Air. It was very annoying. It's, oh, and if you do have a blowout again, it sounds horrible, like it, there's like a basically an explosion under your car, right? Because your part of your tire just like uh, bursts, right? So all the pressure goes away. Um, you also it, you start your car starts rumbling because now you're basically riding on the rubber bit with no air in it. Um, so you need to pull over as quickly as you can. Um, so I pulled over. I immediately did call AAA. 
Even though I know I, oh yeah. I called AAA, but then started changing the tire. And basically by the time the guy got there, I had the spare pretty much on. He handed me a bigger cheater bar so I could make sure the lug nuts were tight enough. <laughs> he like looked at it, was like, yeah, you're good. And I was like, cool, and then I left. So like calling him is totally fine. If you have it, right? If you have the service, there, call him. Because it may be right. something worse, right? Pull the tire like, off, Mary. You don't actually know. You just pull the tire off? Yeah, so literally once it's up, you just slide it off, and it'll come with you. And it uh, rolls away. And now this is your tire. Um, and there's stuff that's Those are, this is your brake um, disc. Yeah, that's cool. This is your brake cylinders in here. This thing basically, when you hit the brake, squeezes really hard and stops your car. Like a bike. Basically, except metal and they will stop a lot more stuff. <laughs> uh, these are your springs, new, part of your suspension. The new gear springs. That's your brake line. Those Magic. Are, yeah, basically. Those are the largest calipers in the world. Hey, Mary, mm -hmm. try pulling this. Okay, move the springs pretty fast. All right. Do you want to try to put it back in place, Mary? Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> Any other one on? So, oh, no. well, because that's the oh, same thing. Oh man, that's heavy. So one, tires are heavy. <laughs> oh my so I wanted God. you to make sure you understood. Um, so it's not off the ground very far on purpose. So you kind of just want to be like sliding it in. And you do kind of like lift it and kind of tilt in that side. Then you have to line up. Jeez, I did not know tires were this heavy. Kick the tires. Uh, uh, before we put it back on, do people want to feel how heavy the tires? is? Like legit? You guys didn't realize. Okay. Okay. Don't like drop it because it will bounce. It's not. It's good for you to do it. It's, <laughs> it's not light. It's not light. No. You can probably. Yeah, up. like every, all of you can pick it up. It's just a matter of trying to maneuver it in a big awkward trying to yeah, slide it into place. It's not yeah. easy. <laughs> 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 you just like to go. Just Olivia. Olivia. What are you here for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You're good. Lift it over your head. Don't lift it over your head. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, no reason to do that. How many KPA are in your tires? 420. Or, that that, 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 that's 420. Let's double that. <laughs> that's a 840. lot. 840. That's a lot of high goals. That's a lot of high goals. No, that's actually... Like, that's that's actually all in auto. Why don't you... Bring, why didn't we bring... Guys. We should have brought this with us, too. Yes, um, you may want to get down and kind of like what I normally do to do it is like here. So you have two hands here and you kind of lift it put it on where it needs to be. Oh, oh. Or I could drop it, you know, whatever. <laughs> oh, also one thing that we didn't show, so that guy right there, that weight, that's what that's how they balance the tire. So all the tire places when they put on a new tire, they'll put it on a machine and figure out where balance is so that you don't get any vibrations and stuff on the road. So if you remove that, your tire would if you remove or adjust that, your tire would start vibrating. Your spare tire doesn't have that. Uh, no, almost certainly not. So you're gonna be very shaky. You wanna try it? So kind of, yes. You almost just like try to get almost centered in front of it. So you can. Yeah. No way. So like, yeah, it's so like bring your body more in front of it entirely. There you go. And then you can try to lift. It's smaller. It is. What's this? What's this one? Bum, 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 bum. It's over here. Oh, so we're off a little bit. Okay. Wearing black shirts are really bad idea. Oh, yeah. Well, wearing black shorts is a bad idea. Or we're just wearing pants. Yeah, so wearing pants is an important Yeah, and these are black. Yeah, basically lift. What are you thinking? They're not square. Yeah. 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 All right, so then why you kind of hold it on? Yeah, why you kind of hold it on? So normally I get my foot under it, kind of like that. And then you grab the first one. Try to get the first couple of threads started so we can. No, we were told not to drop the tires because then it would bounce. We would think he just dropped the tire from each you just no. We just, only told that time. You sabotage Mary. Now she's putting on the tires. Start getting the next one on. Uh, but yeah, doing it by yourself is much more painful. That's why you, I normally always start calling AAA because even if you get like you can get it started and you may have to do it by yourself. A lot of times somebody will stop and be nice and try to help you. Uh, but they don't know how to help. Um, if they ask to help, you can give them direction of what you need to help doing. So no, like, you just tighten them. Uh, yeah, then you start tightening them. Um, you don't want it, You're not going to get them super tight, but you're going to get them pretty far tight. Um, and then you'll put a lot more force to it once we lower the jack back down. So does it start spinning? 
So like this why we're not putting a ton of we're not putting a ton of force in this one. And oh, we're yeah. tightening like a pattern in like the star pattern again. So what's the importance of the star pattern when tightening? Um if you right. tighten too early on one side you'll get the lean and you won't be able to get it out of the lean. Because it won't have enough room to adjust. Okay. It's not a star. It's not a star. <laughs> That'd be the perfect pattern. Yeah, but it's close enough. It's uh it's <laughs> This is cool. It's a, it's, a, it's a crippled star. It's all right. Perhaps. It's our, it's our version of the star. This is really helpful. Nice. Is this the witchery character coming back? Maybe. Maybe not. Witchery character. Everyone's left. Scared of the sun. Spooky. Rule of thumb: If you break it's down, only break a little down, hot break down in the spring or the Only fall. a little. Yeah, but I mean, this is when it normally happens. I had to. Uh, oh, what was the worst one? Uh, it was that White Sands missile range in the middle of the desert, out west of El Paso. Uh, what the? And my rental car I was in got a flat in the middle of the desert, and I had to change it. It was probably well over 100 degrees. Oh, oh man! In the middle of the desert, yeah. So like things like that are times where AAA probably wouldn't have come had I called them. So they probably would have taken like, it would be like yeah, it would have taken a long time with a car that had a flat tire and I didn't feel like dealing with it. So changing it was way easier. Then I just drove it back to the wrong car place. I was like, hey, I need a new car, please. Your, your tire blue. Uh, same thing. Yeah, she, so she did just... that exact same exact All right. So yeah, before you put go too tight. So now your everything's on. So now we're gonna start. You basically back up the jack now and get it on the ground. Hey, Down is way sunscreen. easier. Oh, okay. I have to wear sunscreen. Because now you have the car helping you go down, so it's way easier. Gravity. So that's fine. Yeah, that's the way I normally do it. It's kind of like hand crank it like that. Oh. If only that thing was sideways, so then you could do this. Just like that. Uh, yeah, depending on which one you get, you normally have like a better hook than that. I don't really like the way that hooks in. Like mine, the one on my car has another hook, so you, you can rotate a lot. Oh, you easier. can do it like this. You can get closer to a bike motion. Mm -hmm. No, it definitely takes a little while. Um, the one nice thing about like if AAA comes, they have like an actual jack, not a little scissor jack, so like they can just like pump handle it. Oh. Like, <laughs> way faster. Uh, like, AAA will get you out of a lot of situations. Uh, if you have a dead battery or whatever, you can jump start it. You can also jump start batteries with the little, oh, cell, yeah. How the little cell phone thing now. Uh, we're we're going to open the hood in just like an entire Oh, okay. And jump. If you want to tell people to come back out. Oh, okay. We're just going to pull the jack and put the away. Uh, okay. Alright. And then you should just be able to slide it out probably soon. You probably need to make it so it's low enough to where you can. Yeah, and you may be able to just do it on here. Yeah. Once there's no load on it. You see, it, the, the screen screws all grease too, which is good. It's still new. So eventually it'll get old and rusted and not be greased and gross. Having a can of like WD-40 was is a good idea. <laughs> all right. So getting all this back away. Oh, you, did you tighten? Did you tighten? Yeah. Oh yeah. You should. Yeah. And I'll make sure to tighten them so your wheel doesn't fall off. <laughs> That would be very sad. Wait, no, I didn't. That would be very sad. That's a really horrible. Horrible. I feel like if my wheel fell off or something. I'd be horrible. Yeah, probably. Don't call Triple H's call out. It's kind of scary realizing that come. the tires are only held in by this five little thing. I mean, there's also a lot of weight on them, right? Like. Yeah. Even if with no lug nuts, it's still tricky to get the tire off. Like, it would happen if you turned. Like, it would definitely happen. But it would be a little tricky. And you don't want to over-tighten lug nuts too much either, because like, 
uh, like Mary, you can probably put all your body weight into it and not break a lug nut, but in theory, you can strip the lug nut, which is really annoying. Uh, it's not too bad. Like the any tire place, most of the time can just replace the bolt. Like there is just a bolt on the back end. It's not horrible to do, uh, but you still don't want to do it. So, what's the minimum number of tires that you can drive with in a four wheel car? Four. Four, four is four? the minimum number of tires you can <laughs> but drive like, with. But like, if one tire happens to be missing, just couldn't four. you like still no, somehow no, drive? Four. 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 four is the minimum. <laughs> Like, then why are there these like motorized tricycles on the street? They're that designed. is a different designed vehicle. <laughs> the wheels are in a different configuration. So if you decided to mess up your car, could you no. make this into a tricycle? No. Not by any reasonable standards, no. No, you could not. Don't turn the car. Okay. Watch out for that car. actually open your hood though, because that would be okay, bad you just hit that randomly and that was the only latch. But then if you were driving, your hood would swing up in front of you and you could no longer see it, right? Like if you accidentally pull that lever, that would be very bad. So instead, there's a second lever, it opens it up a little bit, like the first latch gets done, and then there's a second lever somewhere in here. Sometimes if you ever run out of winter weather fluid, you would just pop this open and then pour more winter weather fluid into it. That's crazy. Um, don't go through this though because it's under pressure apparently, according to the pull system. So that would spray down. This is your alternator. This is your engine. So your alternator is connected to it and this is what's giving you electrical power. So as you gasoline, have lots of little explosions happening in here constantly. This belt turns and generates electrical power. 
engine. This is an inline four. So there are four cylinders under here. Uh, this is your air intake. tells you how much oil is in your car. Yeah. The issue is though you need to clean it first to be able to tell. Uh, 
paper. I'm not volunteering by shirt. You know, so you have a paper towel anywhere? Oh, I got my car. Yeah, napkin. Yeah. Not a shirt. No, I like the shirt. It flies. It has a zipper so I can take it on and off whenever I want to. Oh, is it a zipper hoodie? I don't want to see. I think it's just three pairs. Hey, there's a whole roll. Awesome. <laughs> Notice. So oh, it's in Russian. When'd you get your car? Um, early February. No. I feel like Late it's later February. than February. Uh, All right. Have you had an oil change yet? Nope. You don't need to necessarily. It's new. Um, like in theory, you're told to do it every three months, but it's really because of big oil. Um, not really, like not really, but modern cars you can do a lot less. So I cleaned off the thing and I put it back in, so that you can see where it dipped to. So as long as it's at the dot, which it is, it means your car's full. Right. If it was down at that dot, it'd be very bad. Um, so midway closer to that dot, you got to change. Yeah, you want to change it even earlier. So like in theory, you shouldn't be losing any oil really. Like you'll burn uh, some off. Like especially how old your engine is, you'll burn some off. Or if you have an oil leak, you'll start losing a lot. But in theory, it should stay in your car and just get dirtier because um, it's a sealed system. It shouldn't get that far off. Um, your new car will basically stay there for here forever, but it'll also start getting dirtier. So like that's reasonable. Um, that's a reasonable color, it looks relatively normal. If it starts getting really black forever, like you could check it, you can see if it's really black, then you would clean it. Um, ideally, you're supposed to do it every three months or every 10,000 miles. Um, on new cars, it's closer to like six months. You did it every, depending on how often you're driving it, you can do it every year, it's not a big deal. But it's better to maintain it and maintain it well. I don't know if you have, uh, you should probably talk to your friend and see if they got any deal with the dealership on maintenance. Sometimes new cars get, Free maintenance at the dealership, so you just take it to them for free. Um, in theory, you can change your own oil. In theory, you can change your own oil. It's basically stupid nowadays, though, because it's so cheap. <laughs> so, like, if you want to and you want to learn to use your car, that's totally fine. But there's a reason to do it. But if you don't feel like ever doing it, you're not like saving a ton of money by uh, changing your own oil. Anymore. It's like twenty dollars to get your oil changed. It costs about twelve to fifteen to buy the oil. So, <laughs> so you might as well just pay the guy five bucks. Saving five dollars. Right, like it's not worth. <laughs> like it's, it's basically not worth it anymore. To, and plus you need to have jacks and you need to have an oil pan. You have to deal with recycling the oil and all this other stuff. Where they you have just, it all. You take it to a place. It's, they, they it's like twenty five bucks, whatever it is. It's not a lot. Um, if you did need to do it, you would pour oil into here. So if like, for some reason you did spring an oil leak and you realize that's what it was, like your engine was overheating or something and you realize something bad was happening and you check that and it was really low, you would open this, it written on there what type of oil to buy, you would open it, you'd pour in some amount of it, check the dipstick to figure out what level it's at, and you'd be good to go. Uh, like I had to do that my car before where I clearly just needed oil. So what's this little tank here for? Mm -hmm. Good question. I can't see what it says. That's the no, it's just fluid. like you see how it's yellow. Oh, no, that's your brake fluid. That's the brake fluid reservoir because that pump right there is one of your brake pumps, I believe. Yeah, because those are all brake lines coming in and out of it down below it. So that's where you would put in brake fluids, but you should not do that yourself. It's just not worth it. Like, if you know what you're doing, you can learn to do all of this stuff yourself. But there's no reason you can't, but you have to want to learn to do it. Uh, most of the time, it's not worth it. You'll do something then to do it yourself, right? Like, especially on a new car, it's probably not. Death machine, I the guy right, the, the whole back wall is called your firewall, by the way, because it's built so that if something, there's a fire here, it doesn't go into the camp. <laughs> Look at the people are. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? We have to it's ways to see things on a new car. So <laughs> this is actually going to be new. Things you can do by yourself and that are much cheaper if you do by yourself are things like replacing the headlights that they go out. Um, normally it's just in your manual, but for yours it's like basically right here and here. So there's your, that's your turn signal, uh, or your driving light, this is your headlight. So you literally just like pop a little connector out, unscrew this whole thing, go to AutoZone, say, hey, I have this model, this is your car, I need a headlight. They can do it, it's like 15 bucks, and pop a new one. Um, like I normally just do the whole thing in the parking lot at the auto show. Like it's pretty easy. Um, 
Yours looks really easy. Yeah, actually. So it's not even like hard to get to. One of mine is directly behind the battery, where like it's way easier if you take your battery out, but that's really complicated. So then I end up just doing it blind with like a single hand and like trying to figure it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> yours has a lot of room to get into it, so that's probably much easier. <laughs> Um, they're normally in, and all of that is normally in the manual. Mm -hmm. um, for most basic maintenance, you can read through the manual. Also, YouTube, again, yes. everything has a video on how to do it nowadays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool? Yeah. Cool. Right. That's like that. Is it heavy? No. Okay. So, what you normally, yes, yeah, so you figure out how to get that back in your thing. And then as you're lowering it, you get it down to where your hand's kind of underneath it. And then you get it about six inches to make sure the raise hands are out of the way. Oh, so now you went a little... Oh. Okay, so you went too low. So if you get to here, now it's like hard. You just like push on the lid. You don't really want to do it. So normally you want to use its weight. So you get it to about six inches, make sure everybody's clear. Now it's shut and good. Uh, if you do what you did, you'd have to like... It's weird and you can't make okay, sure... So just relift you really want it just to be like six and just like run. Uh, it's a way easier just to make sure it's like, you, mo, like, you're probably fine to close and you probably could do it, but